Hi. Oh. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it, it, it's a bit of a trip from our audio because we can't hear what Megan is saying, but we can hear Dom's side of the conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a good one-sided conversation. I'm sure Megan had, be- I mean, she did say beautiful things. I uh, unmuted and then just dealt with double Dom and that was a little disorienting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, heck, well, hello, welcome. Thank you, everybody, for being here for this wonderful game of Icarus, The Fall of Civilization uh, by Spencer Stark. And I think it's published by Hunters Entertainment and Renegade Games. One of those two, maybe both. Who knows? They're all great. Um, let's start with some introductions. Let's get to know the wonderful folks that are going to be here. Uh, walking you through the absolute downfall of the universe, this world that we're going to create. Um, so hello, I will be your facilitator and collaborator. My name is B Zelda. You can find me on Twitter as at B underscore Zelda. I'm a podcaster, a streamer. I run games professionally, um, and I'm really hyped to especially get to show off how amazing this game looks in Roll20. Um, Grav, why don't you go next? Well, oh, also, my pronouns are they, them. Please toss that in too, because I'm also meeting everybody here for the first time. Gotcha. Hey, everybody, I'm Grav Galati. I am a he, him, and uh, I'm a producer and talent at Saving Throw Show. And you might know me from such projects as Wild Cards and also a bunch of a Wizards of the Coast D&D stuff that I've done, Dark Lanterns, and so on and so on. That's me. How about Jamie? Hi everybody, I am Jamie Mills, she, her. I, you can find me on, I think most social medias at just Jamie Mills, literally at the word just and then Jamie Mills. Uh, you can find me on the DAT network, Dragons and Things. I GM Crits and Giggles. I play on Things in Space and Heroic Endeavors and hopefully whenever Vantum comes back, I'll be back on. <laughs> was that an in-person game? Yeah, it was yeah. our in-person game that Took a good old break for quarantine. Mm-hmm. You know, that just might last until 2021. Who knows? You know, it's fine. You know as it fine. is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jordan, why don't you go next? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Pridgen, and I uh, am a I'm he, him, are my pronouns. And I am a player on Wild Cards here on Saving Throw Show, our Friday night uh, Savage Worlds show. Uh, I'm also part of our uh, Dungeons & Dragons show, The Broken Pact which, you know, keep an eye out for information about, like, that. I guess we'll find out eventually <laughs> um, what the next plans are for that. Obviously, COVID has made everything crazy everywhere, but that's me. Uh, Chantel, how about you? Hey, I am Chantel B. You can find me on Twitter at Chantel B. You can find me at wordswithcolor.com, um, where I am an actor, writer, ranter about the world doctoral psych student I guess um I do a lot of stuff and that's kind of fun my pronouns are she they wonderful and then last but not least Terry hey kids I'm Terry Gamble uh she her and um I'm just excited to be here I'm often on the saving throw show on Tuesday nights playing pirates of salt bay um I am a lovelorn pirate who just got married recently so who knows what's going to happen next with the kids the wife who knows (laughs) um what, so who, yeah, what did you marry? Like, was it a boat? Was it another person? Oh my gosh, no, we, I did create a sentient boat, but I married another pirate. Uh, okay. Yeah, I would have married the boat. Captain, <laughs> who's a pirate, my cross-dressing pirate queen. So, um, often it goes around as, as king and I love her, him, them forever. Um, <laughs> And um, you can catch me on Mondays. I have a podcast, scary movie podcast called Horror Movie Survival Guide, um, weekly podcast talking about scary movies. Da, da, da. Um, if you're too scared to watch them, just listen to the podcast. I swear it's fun still. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's still fun for everybody, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Wonderful. I am going to give you all a wonderful description about what we're going to get into. Um, And for uh, the viewers and those in chat, this is a game that we're all kind of learning together. Um, Because this has been adapted for Roll20, there is a little bit of things that are going to be different um, that we're doing versus how it is played in the game. But honestly, it is going to be wonderful. Exciting. 
excited to see how it's different. I mean, I don't know the way it plays normally, so I guess I won't really notice, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this will be your standard. Like this is going to be the normal yeah. for you. Right. <laughs> One day afterwards, I'll play it without Roll20 and I'll be like, mm, this is not how I played. <laughs> weird. <laughs> so <Actually>. weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Icarus. This is a collaborative storytelling game about the fall of a great civilization. Every game begins in a city nation known as Icarus. It is at the height of its power where, in celebration, the city has decided to erect a massive ever-growing monument in the center of town to, to display its prestige to the world. Each of you are going to choose a pillar of this society to embody, and you will receive a motive for your character that you're playing. That will make more sense in a moment. During the game, um, instead of stacking dice to represent the construction of the monument, we are going to be moving our little uh, X's under this little black box. That black box represents uh, the pillar of our society. It's not quite a pillar, but use your imagination to make it a pillar. And I believe if things are selectable, we'll just be moving little X's until eventually an entire pillar is filled and that will represent the fall of our society. Um, are we supposed to be able to select the X's? Uh, can you select the X's? They should be tokens. We, we can't, they, uh, but can it, it, it's fine if you want to do with all the X's, that's fine too. Okay, okay. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> we trust you. Cool, 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 cool. Thank you for your trust. Bring it down, bring it down. Yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we are going to be collaborati collaboratively discovering what it means for a civilization to decay, as they all do with time. And when our mo monument finally falls, our civilization falls with it, and the game will come to an end. So, to get started, We are going to choose a setting um, and we're gonna build a little bit of the setting together. I am a big fan of um, natural settings, something to do with a lot of water. Uh, so what I would love to go with is we live in a city that is filled with nature. It is a naturally occur occurring area that we live in. There are trees, there is creeping time. There is absolutely no grass in this wonderful area we live with because grass doesn't feed the bees. Grass isn't actually productive to this natural world. Everything we have that represents our Icarus, I think should pollen or it should have seeds to spread. Basically, I just hate grass a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm allergic to grass. I found out recently. Hey. So oh, I'm, I'm very sorry. Yeah. I'm pretty, allergic, yeah. pretty allergic to everything. So uh, it's fine. Cool. Yeah. Allergy team, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is definitely your your city for sure. Icarus, <laughs> 10 out of 10 for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> this, is how our civil, this is how our civilization falls is because we don't invent Claritin in time. <laughs> 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 oh no. Uh, so let's all declare something about Icarus, something about our civilization. So I just want a lot of nature. Um, I want a lot of trees. Um, I don't, what kind of weather patterns do we have, for example? Oh, it rains a lot. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Do, we, do we have any way of controlling the weather or is it just like it's natural all the time? Hmm. Ooh. We hey. have no way of controlling the weather, but we are okay with the rain. We don't really care about whether or not we get wet due to the rain. Ooh, okay. It might that be fun to... to play with that as a religious aspect that the weather is kind of the um, deity and that we believe okay. that the weather is affected by how it feels about what we're doing. I love it. Uh, um, can we do rain dances? Sure. Yeah, that yeah. sounds. I cool. really just think it's like uh, one big mosh pit. Um, I like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And... Dance is really optional. Um, I'd like to say that our society's like, I don't know if we have like an animal. If we had an animal that represented our society, it would be like the snail because snails love rain, and also they also sort of represent the slow and steady march of progress. You know. 
which we have done over however long we've been a society. Ah, uh, hell yeah. I mean, that also leads into, are we humanoid? We can, oh, this that's is, a really good question. We can be whatever can we, be snails? we want. Can we? <laughs> can we I mean, be yes, snails? we can. <laughs> gonna take us forever to get anywhere and i can't wait <laughs> yes <laughs> do we okay moving. so somebody uh, who hasn't answered yes so i was thinking that maybe um a lot of the trees that like are part of our society and maybe even a lot of the other plants are actually like mega organisms like the it, it looks like a whole grove of trees but it's actually just one organism that has like tons of trees that like come out of it like yes. they're all, and, and that's how most of the plants work. Like an entire field of flowers will be one organism that just grows many different stems and parts. Oh my goodness, that's both terrifying and like wonderful. And I hope you know you've created a really, really good narrow chokehold to facilitate the downfall of our society. <laughs> <laughs> So I am one mega an organism goes down. Oh no. Yeah. Right? We all go down. Okay. Now I'm going to hand out everybody some cards. Okie dokie. The pillars of society. This is going to be, I mean, the pillars of our society, but this will align with the aspects that we have circled around our pillar. Oh. Roll20 doesn't like that monitor. <laughs> it's, a, it's a finicky program sometimes. Oh, it really it? is, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna deal one card to all players. Ran out of cards and deck before dealing to all players. Uh, oh, uh, you might need to pull all the cards back if we pulled some out earlier, maybe? I no, I think you I... did, yeah. We, we got out the cards. I guess I see all the cards in the- uh... Except Terry, Terry didn't, didn't get oh. one. Yeah. Didn't oh, but Dom one? got one. Oh, it's because <laughs> Dom's there. It's because Dom's there. Dom's the cameraman. Dom doesn't get a card. <laughs> get Dom. You don't Dom, get to be on. a pillar. <laughs> You should be able to steal it from him. Oh, okay, yeah, Terry, if you click on Dom and then Dom's yeah. card and then steal. Dom, let her have it. Dom, let her have <laughs> the card. Be cool, Dom. 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 Let go. So stealing, stealing, <laughs> stealing, stealing. Yeah, it still says stealing dot, dot, dot. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Dom and his voice changer. Did, did a prompt come up for you, Dom, in Roll20? I think you have to allow the steal to happen. If not, um, I just, just tossed a card up, Terry. Oh, no. This is so, this is the part where um, we as a group learn about how to use Roll20 together. <laughs> and it, it's never as easy as just one click. It is a series of clicks while you wait for something to happen and then nothing happens. And then you all hold your breath and still nothing happens. <laughs> this like, I think tracks with our snail uh, <laughs> yeah. Heck yes. Um, slow. Worst case scenario, Terry, I have put a card in front of you. Um, yeah, educational. Yeah, if you just want to right click and take that. Um, so everybody has, now we should have a pillar of society. Um, for example, I have artistic expression and both of these pillars are going to have a strength and a weakness. If everybody could take the time and read both of them quietly or out loud to yourselves, whatever you do, we are only going to choose one weakness as a group. Everything else, we mm. will have our strengths. Okay. Um, so be very passionate if you want to be the one with the weakness. Um, like if I may say, my weakness is artistic expression has been suppressed or outlawed in Icarus. And like, can you imagine snails who can't artistically express themselves? <laughs> Pitiful. They're always making designs. They're barely snails at all, honestly. The snail <laughs> trail is is a pillar of our society. <laughs> the snail trail, yeah, I love that. It is a monument of our art. It takes years to craft one piece, you know? <laughs> yeah, I picture even our, like, our city is set up in like spirals almost to represent our <laughs> shell design. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, that's yeah. not your category. That's my category. I'm oh, architecture. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ah. I did. <laughs> but I like it. I, I like it a lot. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I think I will say I am not strong either way. I have agriculture. Uh, I definitely see the case for it being a strength uh, with the supply of food within the city being abundant. Uh, but the weakness could be no commercial food made or grown within the city. So we can't eat has... our plants. <laughs> That actually, wait, if they're all mega organisms, that might be a huge case for the weakness being the agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Like it's a living creature, like uh, more than just a living plant. Like we just can't, like that's cannibalism somehow. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Okay, so I vote agriculture weakness. I like that. We're all just gonna starve to death. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Well, so, so I guess we have to have we have to have had. I don't know if, if this is like where we go into this stuff, but if if we have like an agricultural weakness like that, we must have a system in place that was like how we got food or how we get food, right? Since we can't we can't eat any of our plants because they're they're all connected, and that would like destroy our ecosystem. So we've got to have like some way that we do stuff. What do snails eat? I was Leaves? just wondering. <laughs> uh, and for everybody, let me read the rest of this card for you. The weakness, no commercial food is made or grown within the city of Icarus anymore. Why is this? And what outside source mm. now provides the city's food? Oh yeah, because we're not the only city, obviously. So we got to consider mm -hmm. that as well. M maybe maybe it could be like we, we count on... So, okay, my, mine is architecture and it's uh, strength. The building within Icarus look like no other place on the planet. Why is this? And how does it affect the way people perceive the city? And I like the spirals idea that Gaurav was talking about, but I was thinking maybe we like have built into the like mega trees that are like part of our society. And we have like, besides just, you know, making our own shells, we've taken the shells that grow, like when you get to a certain size, and eventually die your shell is taken and it's used to like build these structures that oh circle around the trees that we use Do they and have lights maybe... in them yeah they better <laughs> imagine they're like yeah like like little lanterns you know oh. yeah uh, yeah absolutely yeah. so so it's like we we have this society that just like circles very slowly up trees mm -hmm. and and part of it is that like if you want to get to higher levels in any of our buildings it needs to be worthwhile. So the most important things are higher up mm -hmm. in our society because it takes a while to get there. And and putting time into something is part of like showing how important and how uh, high status it is. But maybe also like part of the, if, if we like live around these trees, part of what we, we stain on is just things that fall from the trees above us and like get caught in, are on like our buildings in our architecture and stuff like that. And, and we, we don't grow or produce anything, but things fall and we are gifted by the sky. <laughs> From the gods. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. From the rain gods. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yes. yeah. Rain, rain knocks it down. Everything yeah, we need sense. just comes from the sky. <laughs> I, would like, I would like to put forward uh, my weakness uh, okay. as safety. Um, the people of Icarus all share a common fear. I would like to put forward that the ocean is approaching and we are snails and therefore salt water is a problem. Ooh, <laughs> that's really good. That's really the good too. The duality of like how we normally love and revere what falls from the sky, i.e. rain, and then the fear of having, uh, like of the encroaching waters. That like, like comes from below. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah no that's way. That's so good. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's very good. Okay, so move my weakness and <laughs> place my vote. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. both weaknesses though. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, while we're like um, Jordan, if you can summarize all of that somehow on your aspect, um, yeah. Like, good things fall from sky. Architect is beautiful shells. Um, I'm also going to be giving y'all another card in a moment that will create a little bit more to that. Um, but who have we not? Uh, question strengths. does it matter like which of these um post-its i i put my thing on nope pick okay. one claim it it's yours for life all right uh we haven't done mine yet mine is energy so i'll tell you my strength and weakness uh strength is power supplied freely through this throughout the city of icarus what's the interested or unexpected source of this energy and how has that changed the way the city is built 
we did mention lights earlier, so there seems to be some sort of power source in this city, but what, what do we think is powering our city? Now, rain is obviously the, the easiest one, but I don't exactly, I mean, we could just make up a way that rain powers the city, but I'm, 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 I wanna hear your ideas, everybody. I mean, I would be open to something else. Like, I, I'm always happy to lean heavily into like rain generated energy, but like, what else we got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we can capture the lightning and thunder from the rainstorms and there's yep. got to be like some special like that's it you that's... know towers oh. created that capture that essence and then we, we pray for like the lightning and thunder to happen uh... yep that's it knocked it out of the park got it in one i like that uh and maybe well maybe the 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 like lightning and thunder is a little rarer than just the the like rain so it's kind of like an important event when it happens. Yeah, my weakness here is energy has become scarce within the city and it's now being used like a currency. So there could be rods that have been sort of privatized that citizens are using to sell electricity as opposed to giving it out freely. And that's, I, I don't think this weakness is better than Chantel. So I think we should definitely go with that, but it's something to consider in the future is what if like rain happens, but no thunder or lightning, like what do people do when that happens? So, um, yeah. so there's a very, go ahead. I was gonna say, even if it's not like scarce to the point where it's a problem, I still think it could be like a neat thing if it's like, oh yes, the monthly storm is coming. We know that that's like, that's great for us. That's when things are really wonderful for like a week or something like that. Right. Oh, that's when everything is at its brightest. And then over time it all dims and eventually oh. we're fall into darkness again. Yeah. And we have the long Ooh. night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With nothing yes. but the glow of nature to kind of nature on the moon. Oh, uh, but I did want to add uh, mechanically, there are uh, opportunities for our other weaknesses to take mm. the fold or it's like to take control. Nice. So always, yeah, be mindful of those because that's a possibility. How has that changed the way the city is built? Would the city have changed how it's built based on lightning rods being placed everywhere? I mean, that's kind of a weird picture in itself in that there are uh, these trees that have rods sticking out of them at the top, you know? Right? It's like this beautiful nature, and then you have this man-made or snail-made yeah. structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I think to like top it off, um, instead of having like a little, the cap, like the metal cap, it's got um, like a really, like a beautifully crafted uh, metal snail cap. Ooh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the rods could even be in spiral form. They don't have to be straight rods, you know? <laughs> really not? I don't sense. know anything about lightning. Or, <laughs> coils. They're like coils. They have to be coils. The coils. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Cool. That's, that's a cool visual. Yeah. Well, and, and it like everything else that our society has built is like built with natural things or things that we got mm. from from our like as I said like we build our our buildings out of like the shells of snail snails who eventually die and like they're used as part of society and the um the lightning rods we built are sort of like the one artificial thing that we sort of have as part of our society, which I kind of like. Yeah, I dig that. Hell yeah. Terry. I can't read mine. I'm having, yes, it's, it's okay. Can you it's right real click tiny. It? No. no. And oh, you can't? Still, I still have the stealing thing like above my oh, screen, so um, I don't know. Click on <laughs> Dom's, uh, right above Dom's name, it said like there's like the little card icon. Uh huh. It should click. There we go. Yeah. Yay, thank you. I was like, mm. <laughs> This whole time you could have been like thinking, no, no. Yeah. No, I was like, <laughs> well, this is just not gonna work for me. It's fun with technology sometimes. Um, okay. Ain't that the truth? You know, I was like, so I'm trying to read everybody's other stuff underneath. Card. And then I feel special because every time I try to click on it, it just tells me to edit token when I hit, hit, hit <laughs> the card and it doesn't let me actually look at it really. Uh, um, I, I've got it pulled up. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, that would be great, Jordan. Thank you for the assist. Okay, um, it says education, education. is the category uh -huh. and strength is the citizens of Icarus are held to the highest standards within the educational system. What subject or topic is seen as most important and how has this manifested itself culturally? Or weakness, the citizens of Icarus are taught only what they need to know. What important knowledge is being hidden from them and why? Ooh, I still like the water being the scariest thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> gonna, I'm just gonna say that, but um, okay. So 
I think the most important thing for us to know is obviously how to continue to um, manifest and harvest food and make stuff like stretch out since we don't have like a really strong agricultural center. <laughs> um, we need to know um, how to um, be very thrifty. I bet we make a lot of like soups, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> snail soup. Yeah. Like, cause we, cause we have to make our food kind of stretch out. So we're like, just add water. Cause we have plenty of that coming from the sky constantly mm -hmm. um, to whatever you're making. So we probably consume a lot of water-based like diet, liquid diet. Um, and so I imagine that's something that's very heavily in the education system. Um, and if there was something they were hiding from us, it could be like, hey, there's probably a way to farm. <laughs> 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 but if we keep them hungry enough, <laughs> they will not rise up. You know what I mean? They'll mm. just keep, keep people just weak enough. Give them just enough things. Keep them complacent. That's uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. exactly. mm -hmm. Not yeah. relatable at all. No, no. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Heck. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for a strength, that's excellent. So like we, we typically like we, we learn about the water and like its properties and how it can nourish us or I guess how we can just really make it last. How to add water to items. <laughs> right. A little snail school just for that. I, I can just imagine all of the little young snails going to like chef school, basically. Yeah. <laughs> like oh, like learning how to hats. make broth yes. and soup and <laughs> snails with chef hat art. Oh my gosh. I need this in my life. Someone. Someone. Amazing. <laughs> Someone please. please snail in a chef hat. <laughs> they like are integral to our society. <laughs> Well, here's the fun part where we kind of get to make characters. Well, I'm going to deal everybody a motive. And a motive is going to be your, I don't know what a synonym for motive, your, your want, your desire. But this is going to fall upon a representative of your pillar. So I'm a representative of the arts. I could be a curator. I could be an artist. Um, it is up to my interpretation, but I have sway within our society. Um... Motives, motives, motives. Wanda Dom, he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> it's true. Is there a way I can like exclude players? Uh, you, there's, like a, <laughs> there's like a deal thing and you can choose all of our names. I can hear you, Garav. <laughs> Cool. Oh God. Great. Oh God. Oh That's God. a nightmare I'm going to have later. Oh God. Ah! <laughs> wow. That wasn't terrifying. Uh, oh, it ran out of cards already. How? Why does this always happen? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I see you got a card. Um, oh, it gave me one. Yeah, if that's the card we're looking for. Uh, everybody should have one of their own, though. I can draw a card or try to if you want me to. Oh, yeah, if you can draw your own motive. Let's see if it lets it. me. Draw one. Yeah, if, if you guys, oh, yeah, yeah, if you could okay. just go to that. Oh, yeah. Draw motive. Cool, got it. Nice. Oh, all right. Got the most combative motive. Whoops. <laughs> well, I accidentally dragged mine out onto the board and I don't know how to get rid of it or move uh, it. Uh, right click, take card. If you want to. Oh, it's just like, wait a minute. It's just like floating above the board. You guys don't see. <laughs> that, that might be, that's just probably you, when you click on it, you zoom in, you should be able to click out of it. No, it's 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 like weirdly like when I scroll up and down, it, it goes with me, and I can't click it or move it. I would All just I can do is click it 20. to zoom in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do that. So yeah. that happened. To, I think that's what happened to me earlier. So maybe I'm gonna hit refresh real quick. Yeah. Yay! Technology. Love that idea. Love it. Technology. Have you tried turning it on and off again? <laughs> My job every day. Uh. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm gonna draw a new motive. Okay, well y'all did that. I realized we forgot to give our society an aspect, like a pillar. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna really quickly figure out how to pull one more out. Pillar. Communication. So the absolute pillar of our society is communication. Huh. Um, oh. I'm gonna look at the strength because I'm zoomed in. 
far too much. All right, this didn't work. Is it still like floating somewhere for you? It says there are no cards to draw. It says ran out yeah, of cards same. in deck before drawing all cards. Same. But when I clicked it, it like found one. Will you try again? Yes, yeah! I will. Yeah. Yeah, you did it. All right, I got it. Does everyone have the same motive? No, all no. of our motives are different. We are all motivated I mean, by different things for the I'm city. Gonna refresh one I'm gonna asking like in a, in, in a practical sense, did people get a motive other than, can we share them? Yes, please. I mean, you can, yes. Um, also- Did people get one other than protect the leaders? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Just making sure it wasn't like, we were all just being handed the same card. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Terry, when you do come back um, on roll 20, if you right click education, I'm hoping now it gives you the option to take card. And I should, 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 this is not a truth, be able to give you. Wow. Now that's a motive. <laughs> so. Oh, yes. Um, I'm thinking that there's only, this might be a game that's only meant for five people. And that's fine. So uh, Terry, you're going to get my motive and I'm going to give myself um, a custom motive. Ooh. I'm still saying it's out of, out of cards. Oh, yeah. I think we just ran out of cards is what happened. Oh. Um, so okay, on cool. the board, on the very bottom right, um, I have a motive and then your education. In theory, you should be able to right click and take. That hasn't been working. I'm just gonna move it over here by my- Yeah, anywhere legible thing. for you. There we go. Okay, so I am the, oh gosh. Actually, I'm gonna go last because I have to think of a new motive that isn't related to y'all's motives. Um, mm. So um, should we try and connect our motive to our pillar that we were? Yes, please. And create an individual, a, a beautiful, wonderful snail um, that you think embodies this motive. Let me just look up snail name generator real quick. Oh, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, if there's uh, actually a snail name generator, my life will oh be my made. God. Uh, oh, boy. Here are 144 uh, cute and funny pet snail names. Close enough. Why? <laughs> 144. I don't know. 144? Yeah, so I'll share. Specific. I'll share it with everybody in the in the Zoom chat or not Zoom uh, in Roll Twenty. Very into it. Uh, I have an idea about my character. Please tell me about so, them, their motivation and how it intersects with your pillar. So my vote of motivation is. Oh, sorry, I accidentally tried to steal Jamie's. Don't let me. I was trying no to No way. <laughs> um, so my motivation is protect the leaders. And since we talked about uh, the architecture, which was my pillar, kind of being that like these spiraling buildings that like get more important as you go higher, I kind of imagine that the leaders of our society live in the very, very top like parts of buildings. And, and they take so long to actually get to those parts of the building that it could be almost a lifetime of like <laughs> spent like climbing these tree circle buildings. And just by dint of being at the very top, you sort of gain societal status. And I have, th there have been elements in society that have like pressured me, who's like the head of the, uh, I'm gonna call myself Track Finnegan. Yes, that's my name, <laughs> Track. Please change your Zoom name so we can call you that appropriately. Okay. Track Finnegan. And uh, there's been pressure to like change, now that we have this whole, like electricity thing to change stuff so that there are ways to quickly go up and down the, the like trees, but that's not how it works. Like that's not how it's supposed to work. So as like the head of architecture and the head of continuing to build, I want to protect the structure that's in place and, and not make it too easy for people to get up to the top because you need that persistence to have earned a place as the leader of our society. There's also the added layer of like the leaders who reach the top, they are the closest to the rain gods. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so you know, <laughs> you're more in touch with those powers and that like affords you a level of reverence. 
what else? Who else can we learn about in this wonderful city of Icarus that is filled with trees, lightning rods, and snails? Uh, my snail, Kipper, Kipper. Uh, is more of a, she grew into a, a farmer, really. She is one of the few in the society that is truly trying to create a new source of food. Um, and she would like to share that in, and she's been trying in a grassroots way to spread that knowledge, move the society forward, move our city forward so we can continue to survive. Uh, but because of this ingrained dependence on the rain gods, a lot of, I feel like a lot of the snails in our city in Icarus uh, are resistant to the idea. And she tries to, you know, educate a little bit. I like that. Oh, I think yeah. it. I, I think it makes. I just with us being snails, and and just from like patterns we're seeing here, I like the idea that like we we get a little caught in our traditions and mm -hmm. don't, don't want things to move forward too quickly. <laughs> so that makes a lot of sense with your. Uh, so sorry. What exactly is your motive? Oh, my motive is to preserve the city. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I like that that somehow, not intentionally, but that does conflict a little bit with Trax. Like Trax wants both to protect the leaders, but it seems like a little bit of that protection comes with the advancement of society. Like you have to keep pushing for that, but there's going to be some pushback from a uh, dear old Kipper. It's also <laughs> very interesting there because farmers would be on the ground at the lowest yeah. level of society. Oh, yeah. And no one's listening. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. We have this classist structure that just ended up happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to building a society from scratch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we already have this other framework, unfortunately, that clouds our vision each time and we keep is. making it. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so something that Jordan had mentioned, or sorry, Track had mentioned earlier about how it takes forever for the people in power to get to the top made me think about how um, if some of them died or obviously will die, that their shells falling from the top and hurting the people below, which they could care less about because they're at the top. They're not going to hurt themselves or their people of their own class. So that's a danger that like the lower class have to worry about is literally uh, large shells falling from the sky and uh, ruining their day or even killing them in certain uh, oh, fashions. Oh. I, I, I like that. And I would say that Track's opinion on this as like one of the head architects is probably that like, well, yes, that happens sometimes, but we have systems that catch mm -hmm. things that fall. That's how uh -huh. our society works. And we need those shells at the top to continue building up so yeah my, my motive is protect the citizens and i think that is what i want to protect the citizens from if that makes sense is the is not not only just the the actual physical danger of uh the higher society damaging the lower but also like the mental and other things that high society is doing that they don't care about the the lower uh form the lower caste of society well um, and and with the suggestion that the that they they could fall and really hurt people I, this is like only sort of related to everything we've talked about, but maybe we like as a species start very small and like grow enormously large compared to how we were. Like the yes. oldest of our species are enormous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like snails. So they're skexies. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what those are, but <laughs> they become Star the crystal. big buildings. Yeah, and sort of cement their legacy by being the biggest buildings once they die. Like that's that's them, you know, like. Yeah. They made their mark on society. Literal pillars of society. Yeah. Literal yes. Pillars. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. I don't want to be in the society anymore. <laughs> I, I know so it started off with so many beautiful ideas, but you know. When you get to the nitty gritty of it, it gets really scary. <laughs> Heck. Um, what else do we have then? Tell me a little bit more about the motives. I mean, so we have protect the citizens. What is um, Sean? <laughs> Uzumaki is that, Shan, is that Shan Uzumaki that's me uh that's a that's a fun reference to a manga if anybody's read it um, I've never never heard of it no wow cool. it's it's mm. a horror manga that has to do with spirals so I thought this was 
after oh this. wait wait uzumaki is it naruto's last name is it i actually yes it naruto. is oh i thought you're <laughs> making a really bad naruto reference no i have i don't know anything about naruto so oh. that's, it's not that okay um yeah mine was protect the citizen should i put the card down or just keep it in my hand oh you can keep it in your hand okay mostly cool. because i'm gonna get really there's only so much space <laughs> gotcha no i think that's wonderful um tell me a little bit about fizzy tom fizzy tom um fizzy tom in a chef's hat um, nice yes oh, art there it is. yes art. i did it um the fizzy bucket tom of soup is um has the motive of get rich Ooh. so Ooh. fizzy tom spends all of his time uh getting as close to the ocean as is possible without getting fizzy um mm. and goes back and forth to let everyone know what's happening but he only tells people what's happening for a little money nice <laughs> okay Okay. Yeah, so you, I, you're like a ranger explorer in our society, sort of thing. Yeah. Oh but my like goodness. typical adventure, adventurer. Please pay me before I tell you exactly <laughs> yeah. what's going on down by the ocean. And and you probably know a little more about like what's happening with this rising ocean than than everyone else does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just for visual, you do have a chef's hat, so like we can always <laughs> see you coming from a distance. Yeah. We're like, ah, oh, it's fizzy. Gotta get our, our, to our snail money, you know, for some information. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I have to wonder what our currency is because we didn't get any pillars of currency, so it doesn't impact our society per se. It'd be like uh, mushrooms or something that grow on our shelves. Like the or, bigger your shell is, the more money you have. I don't know. Maybe we don't have currency. Maybe we're like a, a, a I don't know if I'd say post currency, but like. If we're like a collective, we're snails, we work together. Our bounties come from the sky. It's not about, you know, who, it, it's it's not about owning, it's not like a capitalist system, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. We can definitely have currency. I don't wanna shut down that idea, but. I mean, I could just really love food. Yeah, currency is nutrition. <laughs> currency yeah. is food. That's really, yep. Yeah. I mean, that falls really well into like the mushrooms that just happen to grow on our shelves. Sure. Uh, <laughs> It's so sad though, like somebody comes up to you and they only have one mushroom and they're just like, Aww. I guess I'll give you my last. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, it's closer than it was yesterday. Ah. <laughs> Oof. Oof. I'll leave, come back the next day. <laughs> so evil, I like it. Oh. Right. Tell me about Zelda Slocum. Zelda Slocum, yeah. Slocum. Zelda Slocum. Uh, <laughs> I am the superintendent of schools. Uh, my goal is to bring down Icarus. So I figure the best way to do that is to diseducate, uneducate, educate the people. <laughs> Heck yes. Yeah, it's the best way to infiltrate the school system. Um, yeah. Can you talk about it's, how your success has been with that so far? How, oh, how has that been going? Pretty good because as the people don't understand that they have any type of power whatsoever. They are just trying to wait for the drops to come from the sky. Well, and, and, and the leaders maybe haven't been below whatever we, however we do the levels in like decades, because yeah, if yeah. you're a leader, you've been spending your entire life, like working your Fine. way up the tracks. So you have no don't idea know what it's what like it's down like there in anymore. Most of society anymore. Mm -mm. Totally wow. out of touch. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. So if I can get them all to drop their shells on all the people at the same time. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> dark. <laughs> Real dark. Uh, who's to say what will happen next? Hello. I see some direct opposition between our snails. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't understand. <laughs> you wouldn't you're too high so yeah so i was out on my yacht and um snail yacht you know the ocean's fine actually just people don't know <laughs> okay don't Dang. tell them it's how i get paid <laughs> oh it's fine sorry so sorry tom I have like an idea. It's just like Tom's allergies that makes them fizzy. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody oh goodness, knows. Sneezing snail. Ah! 
Aww. Sarah can't cute. handle that. They are. I They're just little see, slugs. Like a young Tom, busy Tom with like a good old snot bubble out of whatever <laughs> nose a snail has yeah. between yeah. all of its antenna. Oh, are those so antenna? Cute. What are those? Appendages? They're eyes. That's I think that's their eyes. Yeah. yeah those are eyes, eyes, right? They're what about eyes. the other two? Yeah. Aww. Yeah, Terry, I mean, you did draw basically Gary the snail. It's so cute. <laughs> I did. I oh didn't even gosh. think about it. We're doodling snails? We'll give some paper. Jeez. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Out? As soon as we were talking about, I was like, cute snails. I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Heck yes. Uh, I think I'm the last one. Um, I would like if we can collaborate a little bit on what a motive for, um, I would like to be in charge of the decoration of our um, city. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm like the um, interior designer. That's that's my title. Um, I think like, what would a motive be that relates to that? Because like, I am a curator of the arts. I believe that uh, snail trails on the ground are the best way to self-express. I, I have... Oh, go ahead. Uh, so my idea was that if you are an artist or someone who advocates for the arts, what if you are, as a, a seeing as a society, we need to get past our art structure always being spiral based, and you were advocating for something that is different to push society straight forward. lines. Yeah, something <laughs> not even just that, but like something that just isn't spiral, so that people will be like, there's something else out there. We can't just be spirals all the time. We should look towards other cultures and other forms of art to express ourselves, or else we're going to continue this downward spiral into. It's like, are we art spiraling design. out of control, Grab? Yeah. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Exactly. That, that's what it feels like to you as an artist, and you want to branch out and do something different to help society. So, what if your motive is move on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's actually that's pretty good. Wonderful Forward progress. I, yeah. I'm starting Forward to feel like progress. track is like the one staunch conservative amongst this group of people. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Uh, on track Finnegan <laughs> oh. oh heck okay what that tracks <laughs> uh, did we address the pillar of the society the communication oh. not yet and we do need to okay. do that um so the society has its pillar this is what we are known for truly this is how people identify with us. Um, and we've built a monument in respect for this very specific um, pillar of society. And it is communication. So why mm. is communication so incredibly important to us? And let me, how do I zoom in again? I'm just gonna make this really big. I Google how do snails communicate? Cause I have no idea. I have an idea. A unique adaptation, invention or approach in the city of Carissa has improved the way people communicate. So what is it and how has it changed the way citizens interact? I have an idea and I don't want this to like, this doesn't have to be like the final idea or anything, but maybe we like have a system of communication that like uses our our shells and the the like circular um architecture and setup that we have and you can basically like anyone can say anything which can be heard anywhere in society like the way that it like ricochets off of our like walls and stuff we have like a, a so even if you're on the very bottom you can send a message which is heard all the way up at the top and it doesn't necessarily like mean that people he will like listen and do what you say, but like any well, word can be bounced around to the entirety of. I have a parallel proposal. Yep. We have this system that like this, uh, I already forgot what we called it, the thing that's alive that we're all kind of living on. What mm -hmm. if that's the message that we kind of channel our thoughts into and Ooh. it projects them back out that we can all hear it. Um, and you just kind of have to sort through with your little snail brain cells like which which side like synapse you want to connect to to receive the information so it's, it's like, like we a mass so, telepathy in a way yeah we, sort. we all have access to like a giant mental ham radio kind of thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but snail like it must radar. be so busy can, can we combine yeah. snail and radio S like radar snader Snadar. 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 <laughs> and it goes through our like tree megastructures that that like everything is connected to. 
That's yeah. crazy. Would the size of your shell dictate the kinds of signals and the amount you can like filter through maybe? And like, so you'd oh, have that increases the power the bigger, the bigger, the bigger your, your like, you can hold more information basically, yeah. or gather more. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And, and, and of course, the, and maybe like you, you put out a stronger frequency sort of like, yeah. like your message is easier to see and decipher when you get larger. So the huge snails that are up at the top of the trees can send these dictates down and these messages mm -hmm. and stuff Big like that. Big vibrations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. throughout the trees and the ground. Ugh, ugh. This society breaks my soul. <laughs> Literally earth shattering. I was, I was like, oh, earth shattering sounds by the end. Mm -hmm. But There's okay, so here's, avenues, here's like, another oh. idea. Just is just like a different take on this. Maybe instead of it being like literal words that people send, you send like messages that are a mix of like emotion and thoughts and communication that go through the vibrations. And it can also be the sort of thing where like if if tons of small snails are all like feeling the same thing, the message can be amplified uh, like throughout oh, society. I love that. So like when we all kind of gather to mosh for the rain dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a really intense sensation. Like it's a really beautiful feeling that it's, it's shared throughout us. Exactly. Or, or like a time of great mourning if like That's something I, happens, yeah. if mm -hmm. everyone feels the same thing, it can like literally sound throughout the trees and the, the whole society that we have. Oh heck, that is so good. Okay, wonderful. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so I don't stare at it anymore. So we've got our pillars, we've got our one weakness. Um, we've written down our version of our aspects or just something that you can write down to kind of remind yourself of your iteration and your interpretation of your aspects and your motive. We've got our names. Um, everybody uh, is everybody's character just going to have their own pronouns, like your IRL pronouns? Yeah, I think that makes sense. So. Keep it simple. Okay, yeah. thank you. We've got the purpose of the monument. We don't have the purpose of the monument. What is the function of what? Okay, what is our monument? What is the monument of communication that we have? I hate to use the word raised because that also means to take down. Um, that we have built up. What is this monument and what purpose does it serve? Hmm. It might be interesting to build the monument of something inorganic since our society is all organic based yeah. uh, like a true monument of stone that would reverberate these feelings and vibrations as we communicate with one another heck yes maybe is stone the best go ahead so I, I like the idea that like our monument is something inorganic what if there was like one object or event that like came from somewhere else inorganically and that sort of opened our minds like that turned us from just being snails just part of everything to starting to think as a group to starting to be able to communicate like a I don't know like some sort of uh like giant metal spike that landed somewhere in our grove mm. And we kind Absolutely. of revere it. We're like, ah, that's that's the spike of awakening, or that's the, <laughs> well, the spike of awakening. Oh, that's really I cool. like the name. I dig that. Spike oh, of awakening. heck yes. Uh, we definitely polish it every now and then so we can see like our reflective snake. <laughs> no, there's like a whole team. Yeah. There's yeah. got to be like a whole team that actually that's like their job like each day. Like they like oh, maintain yes. it. They wake up and then like at night there's like like a little like it's like, you know, when you raise in the flag or whatever, like every day it's like this is like. <laughs> oh, and 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 like maybe it's maybe it's huge. Maybe it sticks out above the canopy of the trees, which go like enormously yes. high. Hmm. I think that would be beautiful. I mean, it's a stark uh, opposition to like everything else that our society kind of stands for. It, it could also be how we first discovered how to ca capture power because it is essentially a giant lightning rod at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So it awakened more than just our minds. It awakened our possibilities towards the future. Energy. It also could 
because it's so high, we could, maybe there are priests of the rain gods that think mm -hmm. that the vibrations coming from the top of it are messages from the gods to us. Yep. Yeah, love it, well, love and, it, love it. And maybe like, um, since since going up higher in buildings is like sort of how you build your, your, um, your cred in society, like how you gain your status, maybe people who kind of go along the religious track, like the rain god tracks, the building that they climb up is the, the spike of awakening. Oh my gosh. And we talked about the encroaching danger of the ocean coming, but uh, what if like, because that's happening, the ground below is getting a little soggier and wetter. And so the spike is like tilting, like over time we're seeing like this spike is going to fall if we don't do something. And so is our society. Once that spike goes, we go. So it's it's a visual change that we can see over time that like our society is literally falling. I love that because like in the game, you have your, your dice that you're stacking mm -hmm. um, and that's yeah. supposed to represent the tower. And then, you know, you add a dice and it crumbles. Well, that's your society crumbling. Yeah. Nice. We <laughs> have this beautiful antenna, this, this spike, what do we call it? Spike of, um, spike, of spike of awakening. Spike of awakening. Spike of awakening. Oh, so spike good. Of awakening. Da, 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 da. Okay. So We've got its function, the purpose of the monument. Move pillar card and put the aspect. I don't think we have any pillar cards out. All right, wonderful. I think we are good to get into the meat of this game. We have this wonderful society of snails. Snails who possess uh, an idea of education. You know, they understand the agriculture necessary to survive. They understand how to add water to their leaves to really make it stretch out that leaf stew to survive longer. And there are other snails who begin a journey of power, of strength, of eternity as they begin this artistic and powerful slimy crawl up the trees to ascend to I don't want to use godhood but leaderdom or like what's not a good synonym other than power whatever it is that they are trying to acquire I don't think anybody has quite made it up yet it's just this eternal climb that our leaders must do and nobody's made it to the top and our society has persisted beneath the canopy ever since. And this is what we are going to step into. So, um, mechanics of the game. I am going to draw two cards of the cracks in our facade. We are going to answer as a group. Um, and then that's gonna kind of get everything started. Um, after the first turn, what everybody is going to do is we are going to take the dice. And again, we're short. Can I just copy a dice, actually? They should be able to. Just yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. There we go. Um, we're going to place a dice on somebody's aspect because this is going to either change it. So, for example, I don't believe that the coiled lightning rods are constructed to capture power through lightning strikes. In fact, this is a conspiracy that has been set up by the leaders based on the card that I've drawn. And to signify my doubt, I'll put a dice on um, Sean Uzumaki's belief, his aspect. If somebody believes in me, you can also put a dice next to mine that kind of validates uh, the friction that we've created. Oops, oh, this is gonna be happening a lot. Oh, the over-under. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness only we can see the scary part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to read us two cracks of our facade. Um, has everybody inputted at least a little blip? I have not inputted any of my... Um, my aspect Wait, we... was... Go ahead. Should we put our motives on the board somewhere too? Like our, uh, our write-ups of those? Yeah, please. Art needs to change in order for us to look better. That's my motive and that's what I stand for. <laughs> oh, it's too bad this doesn't word wrap. 
Yeah, you got to do it manually. Right? Oh, oh great. Oh, come on, roll 20. All right, so the first card. The cracks in our facade. A wave of crime is spreading throughout the city. What is it and what group is being blamed for it? Oh. And I believe we're starting, I draw two cards from the story deck. And this is gonna be like our, our beginning. Sorry, this is gonna overlay everything for a second. And a peaceful Ooh. protest flares up in a public area of Icarus. What are they angry about? So let's discuss this and then we can start to move some dice around. What kind mm. of crime can spread throughout our city as the curator of arts, as the interior designer of Icarus? I mean, people have been drawing over other folks' slime trails, but I wouldn't quite consider that a crime throughout yeah. our city. But maybe, maybe it is though. Like maybe if, maybe since it takes so long to like build these tracks and that sort of thing, that if you draw over someone else's, it's considered like really destroying their work. Uh, and maybe it's gotten harder to find places to express yourself with your tracks because we've lived for so long. Oh, Disrupting no. the tracking system. Yeah, well, what if it's even more than that? What if it's, um, you know, how we get around is we create these tracks and if someone is leading tracks off into different places, Ooh. how do we get, how do we get anywhere? How do we know that we're going, where we're going is where we're trying to be? Mm -hmm. Oof, oof. That's almost like the idea that, yeah, if you don't follow the established track and you create your own and you deviate from what not just has been established by the architecture, but you know, I haven't even, a speedy raindrop uh, as the interior designer. I have put a lot of effort into ensuring the, the straightness and I am working hard to stop us from <laughs> spiraling and everybody just keeps, and we're going in circles and we're not getting anywhere. Um, so I, I have reported it to our policing force. Who are we blaming for this? What group? Is it the gosh darn students that that education that the, the uh, Zelda just couldn't get a hold of? Oh no, our Zelda, are you my? Yes. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I was like, oh, what did I do? I was just like, no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what do you mean? What I know who mean? I think, I'm I know who I think the scales. upper levels are probably blaming. Like maybe well, different people are blaming different things, but I imagine the upper levels are probably blaming the impatient. Like those who who are so insecure, their, their place in society, they're not willing to wait to the point where they can like, get to where there are new they open spaces. They haven't done enough spiraling. They haven't <laughs> spiraled enough. They yes. haven't paid their spiral dues. Everybody spiraled at the bottom for a while. For a long That's... time. I, I would love to see like a, re a rebellion group that uh, ditches their shells and are just slugs. <gasps> and, and the higher ups like, that is heresy. You cannot just ditch your shell. That is our society. Growing your shell is part of forwarding our society. Yeah, yeah. So ditching your shell could be a huge crime. If I may, uh, I think Kipper is definitely involved with that sect because mm. your shell weighs you down. You can't farm with oh, it. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you get up faster if you ditch your shell. That's true. That's true. We could be more productive without our shells. So I guess the shellless is the shell maybe That's who exactly we are. What I was thinking, yeah. Who we're blaming? Shellless. shellless. And and he, here's the problem with the shellless. <laughs> Anybody could be a shellless if they just took their shell off. Mm -hmm. And shellless can can just put a shell it. on, and then they look like they're just part of society. Yeah. They're like reverse superheroes, where they take off something to to have this <laughs> other aspect of themselves. This other superpower of like slightly more speed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the freedom, it's freedom. Losing your shell, like that's the propaganda you see is like lose your shell, be free is what oh. you say don't around you, the city. Don't you also cut yourself off a little bit from the communication because we were talking about the vibrations, right? Well, yeah, not Ooh. only that, but so you is lose... that a way for you to like have illicit conversations so you're yeah. not, so illicit. you can have private conversations. Yeah. And you're not being bombarded with the higher up ideals 
Yeah, because you are yeah, ditching the currency. Down. You're ditching the currency of the the shrooms that are on your shell while you're doing that too. Which so. oh my god, yeah. I, I think it's the sort of thing where there's like a, a give and take to all of it because being part of society and constantly hearing the the shell vibrations, which we should come up with a with a term for that or, or something. But hearing that constantly like keeps you connected and keeps you understanding that we're working towards a better like society. But it's also a little like brainwashy sometimes. <laughs> Could we call the vibrations uh, shell shocks? Yes. 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 Please. Right? Please do. <laughs> the shellless shell shocks. I love this. <laughs> Yeah, I have a bit of a lisp, so like this game is gonna be so hard on me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Adorable. So many shell-related things. Yes. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. So with this, oh god, we have something else going about in our society. We've mm -hmm. got the shellless running around rampant, Literally, destroying yeah. previous slightly straighter lines like are the shellless do you feel a little bit more passionate about those spiral tracks that you that you folks enter kipper if you could be their spokesperson speaking for the shellless uh i think an integral reason we are so opposed to this continual spiral is tied to the farming and the forward movement of society, farming is done in straight lines generally. And that is the best way to keep track of all of your crops. You have to do that to move forward. Otherwise you're going to be passing the same mark every time you revolve, you make a revolution around mm -hmm. a spot. Oh goodness. Wow, I have a lot of mixed feelings about this then. Speedy really wants to um, really report this wave of crime that has been spreading throughout the city to like anybody who will listen the leaders they won't listen but i do report it through my shell um but at the same time like it kind of aligns with my motivation so i'm a little conflicted this will be interesting when i get to move my dice um, yeah. simultaneously in our society of icarus there's a peaceful protest that has been occurring in a public area of icarus but what are they angry about is it the shellless? Are they all naked again? I feel like they might be protesting high society. This this might be different than the shellless, but they might be involved in helping this. But high society um, seems to be a, a constant issue among everybody. That uh, uh, well, I guess most of us, not all of us. But that's maybe, that's one idea. Maybe a way people could be um, protesting is. I mean, we have dice stacking as a mechanic in this game. But maybe people have been like pillaring, like they've been climbing on top of each other to like get artificially higher, oh. which is oh, <laughs> blasphemous. Yeah, and, and it's not, yeah, I've been seeing that on the on the the grams of shells. <laughs> 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 and and it's like it's not necessarily illegal, but like it, it, it is flying in the face of the idea that like the only way you get higher is by, is by perseverance in the mm -hmm. society. Meritocracy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, heck. So I, I think ahead. for this peaceful protest, the shellless aren't necessarily the for the front of it, but they definitely are supporters of. Totally. Them folks, they always stick their stick their eyes where they don't belong. <laughs> I wonder if like the the people in lower society are probably more aware of the problems of you know the the imminent flooding that's coming, whereas the people in high society are like, oh, we don't care about that because they're not going to drown. So well, that's why their voices are try starting to get louder at the bottom now. So maybe there, yeah, maybe there's a big voice that are like, we need to do something so that we can get higher faster because the water is going to catch us and it's going to kill us at the bottom. What, what and if, other people are like, there's a way to get up. It's yeah. going around the spiral. What what if pillaring, <laughs> like you said earlier, also enhances the communication signal that those uh, oh. snails have together? And they're bla blasting out a signal of almost propaganda saying like, don't listen to high society. We're all in big trouble. We need to do something about this. Yeah. I love that. Oh, that. Fizzy Tom would be joining in on that then. Okay, yeah. 
Oh. Busy Tom would absolutely be in on that. Busy Tom. Oh. We, we, we at the top. Well, I, I, okay, so Track isn't at the top. He's, as part of like the architecture team, he is one of the only, like his people are the only ones who are allowed to like go up and down through like an elevator system. Middlemen. Ooh. Because they have to, if they want to keep building and like doing stuff. And so they have to protect that and make sure that's only available to people who like they know are not going to use it to like break their role in society. Yeah, I, I think we should all, I don't know if this is part of this thing, but we should decide what part of society we are, either high, low, mid, something in between. Um, but I think Shan, uh, my character, pillar of energy, would probably be at the top, but is also concerned. He's, he's the voice of reason at the top being like, we have to listen to them down there. They are our workers. They provide the food. Like if we don't do something about a situation, it's going to go to shit and people don't listen, like listening to him, but he keeps talking and trying to get the word out. Heck yeah. I mean, I'm honestly, arts are always at the bottom of society. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but that being said, I bet that arts are like very respected by like all the levels of society, you know, like mm -hmm. because we we are such a slow contemplative nation in so many ways. I think I would oh. like that. Also, Lose we're going to be somebody? playing a little bit of um, musical chairs. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> oh, <Twitch>. no. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Dom is probably like, ah. Our foreheads. Yeah. Uh, looks like we lost Terry. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Burning dog meme. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I streamed with somebody once who had the background, like uh, like the animated background of the burning dog meme as their role 20. <laughs> um, honestly, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yep, this is fine. <laughs> I can't reset until Terry gets back. All right, enjoy my forehead. Enjoy Terry's uh, eyeballs down. Jamie's nose up and Grav, we got you chin up, so that's not as bad. Here I am. Hello. We've also got <laughs> Jordan's now. forehead and Chantel's forehead. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Can you see my eyebrows? Because that's how I express most things. Yes. That's where, the, that's where the power comes from. Yeah, we only need your eyebrows. That's Honestly, the, the rest can you can just delete that. <laughs> All right. So we are at the phase where um, actually, if you want, Dom, if you want to switch it over to like the roll 20, um, I don't know if the roll 20 itself would be centered. It's just our cameras might be wonky. That might just give folks a little something to look at. Yeah. Look at the chaos. Oh God. Yeah, this is chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Feast your eyes on what this cast and I have been trying to operate on. Uh, honestly, shout out to the designer for even creating this for me and then letting me ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> so with our two cracks in um, society, now we have to take the dice and decide if that changes some of the aspects that we've established. Does this change our society now that there are protests, now that there is rampant crime related to the arts sector? I mean, let's be real, a crime also has to do with a bunch of nudie snails. Um, <laughs> and that can intersect in a lot of ways. Um, so if I were to go first, which I can, I'm going to drag my dice bring it forward. Whatever. Um, on art needs to change in order for us to succeed. Terry! Oh, back. Hi, guys. Hello, welcome, welcome back. back. Thanks, thanks. Just here to mess up windows for Dom. And... <laughs> yes. An important role in our society. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Dom can never get complacent. It's one of the great <laughs> rules of saving throw. I'm so sorry. I, uh... All good. I, when, I, when I say I'm fundraising to get a new computer, I'm not kidding. Uh, <laughs> hadn't yeah. dropped in a stream yet, just only when I'm trying to run more than one program. So I might just drop out of the roll 20. Yep and just run less things on the computer. How about that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Understood. Well, I think is very resource intensive. It is, especially if you're using it on Chrome. It's like yeah. a double whammy. Yeah. That would be why I think I wasn't able to do as much stuff. So I'm just gonna close that. Uh, I feel like with that being said, uh, thank you very much to folks who have donated uh, to the ALZ. Um, if you would also be so inclined, donate to Terry. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure at the end of the stream, she can plug uh, some stuff where we can donate to her because I am very supportive of folks 
with good computers. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh man, what a day. <laughs> Dom is the spike of awakening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that I was love definitely that. the spike of awakening. Yeah, that makes mm-hmm. sense for sure. All right, so we had just kind of covered um, the cracks that are appearing in our facade, or excuse me, um, the cracks in our society that are appearing. We've got the rampant crime. We've got the protests, and we now have to move dice onto our aspects that we think are going to be impacted, that will be changed by these facts of our society. Um. Mine had been a little bit more idealistic. I had written uh, art needs to change in order for us to succeed. Um, with the crimes of art that is now being tarnished, I think that art is now, oh gosh, how has it changed? Um, I think art is no longer a tool of our society. Now it is a tool of the protesters and it is a tool of criminals. Mm. It is no mm. longer revered by all uh, platforms. That makes sense, especially yeah, since we don't like- have art in schools anymore. Ah, no. Ooh. What well, are you do during would, recess? <laughs> it would make sense if, if art also had a practical side, like if it helped guide us in the way things were. And now like using it to like break down that practical side is, is, is changed how we look at art. This makes me sad. All right, so um, we're gonna go around now. If anybody would like to move a dice onto an aspect they wanna change, or you can move a dice onto an aspect that already has a dice to put your support behind that change. So uh, I have a question. Mm-hmm. We're just like guidance in making these changes. We're not like trying to represent our character and like do you stuff. Kind We're just of trying are. to. Like your interpretation of whether you agree with this change would be a little bit about how track sees. Does track think that the changes for arts as a tool of the as a tool of the criminals? Does he view that as something positive? Probably not. Then you're not okay. going to want to throw your support behind that. I just wanted to clarify it. that before yes. I start like representing like ultra, not ultra, but like conservative architecture based views in my changes here. <laughs> uh, well, would you like to go second then? What would you like I to don't... either change or put your support behind something I... that has already changed? I need a moment to think about it. Uh, yeah. I think, or oh, sorry, Jamie, go ahead. You, you raise your hand. Oh, I was just going to say Kipper fully supports art changing and moving us forward with the shell lists, et cetera, et cetera. Heck yeah. Art has to change. I'm just gonna write that down. To support the shell lists and the criminals. What do we call the criminals who keep stacking themselves? Do we have a name for them? We said it was the climbing challenge. (laughs) (laughs) Yup, got Uh, it. (laughs) I'm sure it's a... So let's think about it. Pillaring's uh, all the rage. Pillaring's all the rage. Pillaring. <gasps> Pillaring. Rage against the show. <gasps> Never stop. Thank you. Climbing in the name of. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> great. Uh, if you want more puns, donate to the good cause. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I usually don't like puns, but these are just so good. These are just so the good. The chat has been fire. Like we've yeah, got I, I've, been, I've been noticing. Yes. Packers <laughs> is great, yeah. Um, I so think good. Shan Uzumaki wants change in architecture because this divide between the high society and low is, I think, tearing society apart. So he is going to put his die into architecture. Okay, based on the cracks that have appeared, what change do you think is taking place within that? So that means uh, I get to decide what kind of change? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, you can just change somebody else's aspect entirely or delete their aspect, honestly, if you're just like, I change all of that. Well, uh, I would want, the change I would want is like uh, limits on building heights, basically to, to limit the amount of power that people can attain and to sort of spread that out into more even uh, buildings instead of just stacking, 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 because then the divide gets gets uh, physically and also like 
societally different. So you, so I, I was trying to limit that. Cl clarification, just because I, I don't entirely understand how these dice work. Is that something that has happened? Like we we decided that there is a limit as high as it could go, or is that something that that like we are working towards as a goal? Or it has been implemented probably due to the force of the protests sure. that have okay. been happening. Um, yeah, you yeah. could say like Shan Uzumaki's people who he who wor work for him are like, we're not going to power the buildings anymore unless you make these changes. You know, like we we have sway, like you said earlier, like we we have sway in our faction uh, to make things happen to push power. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's a peaceful protest too. So yeah. you just like, we're going to hog all the power. We're going to yeah. hold this hostage until you I'm, get in. Yeah, I, I'm and, only going to power the lower society. Upper society gets nothing until you fix this. And Track and the Builders probably are very against this oh, because right. they yeah. know that our society can only go as high as our as we build. Right. And it can only go as high as, like, where are the shellless leaving their shells? If we don't they're, have those shells, where are they going? Because they might need them at some point. So we've dumping got them into collection. The, they're dumping them into the ocean as a show of power. <laughs> Well, exactly. <laughs> if they're dumping them into the ocean, we need architecture that's going to allow, you know, stop the ocean from approaching. So right. maybe it's uh, about changing the architecture to build a, we're going to build a wall. A, a good wall. A, a, a really good wall. <laughs> this time, actually good. Seawall? Seawall. Sea wall. Sea wall. We're yeah. going to build a seawall. And we're going to pay for it and with our own currency, our own mushrooms. <laughs> we're paying for it with our shells. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We could use and shells to just, build a wall. Oh. Yeah. That's what the shellers are doing. Oh. Yes. Yeah, cool. Sorry. Uh, okay. I have an idea. This is a little more like negative kind of. It makes sense. Yeah. I, <laughs> you're the bad but, guy here, Track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or uh, not Not the bad. I've been thinking very much about how Track views his, his ideas <laughs> in society. And, and he, he feels pretty strongly about them, even if they're maybe a little backwards in some minds. But I also think that, um, so I want to put one on agriculture. Oh no. And I just mm -hmm. want to add that farming on the ground has been competing for resources with our like uh, mega trees and, and the, the like mega uh, flora of everything. And, and, and as an architect, I, or, or like there, there are people who believe that it is undercutting the stability of like our tree homes and stuff, even if it is like helping to uh, help our sustainability as a society. Um, does that work? Yes, but you also have, if you could intersect that a little bit with the cracks in our facade as well, like have the criminals been what pushed you into having to make that action? Like, Yeah, well, okay, so wait, I, I was thinking more that it was like these these groups of people who mm -hmm. instead of just relying on the things that come from the sky are, are like learning to uh, like go out and farm on their own, like that is starting to actually kind of mildly undercut the nutrition of our mega trees. Does that oh, work? Yeah. yeah, if you can somehow abridge that in whatever uh, aspect we have. I got you. This is where the game's gonna get a little wordy. Yeah. And don't be afraid to delete uh, things that aren't relevant anymore. Um, this isn't meant to be a game of lasting text. This is a game where everything crumbles. Um, oh so God. should I add on to the architecture one that uh, buildings can now go no higher than the electricians dictate? Yes, please. Should I add the seawall? Uh, yeah, because that has now become a truth. Also, we can change font size, I just learned, so. Oh, <laughs> yes. So we can make this maybe a little more readable, we'll see. <laughs> I just rely on zooming in a lot. Yeah. yeah, that's what I've been doing until I was like, there must be a way. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, did we double the, oh, never mind. While we're typing, thank you everybody who has donated so far. We are doing amazing with this goal, like seriously. Uh, so keep it up and thank you, everybody. We really appreciate any any donations. It's a very important cause. Especially if you want to encourage our puns. 
Um, yeah, right? Oh, we yeah. More. more puns are on the way. Oh, yeah. For yeah. Sure. Plenty of puns I on track. Can't stop, won't stop, kids. So. <laughs> And I'm not reading or typing right now because I'm not running in the program. So <laughs> in the meantime, um, yeah, no, I can't wait to hear what you all are typing. Um, yeah. Well, that's then, good. Zelda, what my educator. I... Yeah. If there was something about our society that you think has been changed, or would you like to throw your support behind any changes that are happening? Um, for example, in the art sector, um, changes are happening to support, like art has now been, it's looked down upon because it now only seems to support the shellless and those who pillar. Um, oh, yeah. I like supporting that, but I also am tempted to support Shan and him stopping the actual power, like, and just being like, nope, like the people need to stop doing what they're doing. I want things to come to a standstill. And I'm, very much kind of, I think, wanting to support that feeling like if we stop everything and stop progress, that's an easier way to make things fall than if we continue to build up. All right, I'm gonna put one more dice behind energy then. Oh gosh, this is so chaotic. I think this is energy. Okay, so it looks like we have Two in architecture, two in art, one in energy, and one in. Oh wait, so did I? Go what ahead. What was the other? What was the first architecture one? We did the there. There's a building limit height now. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Building a seawall. Okay. How do I make these go forward to front? There we go. There it is. Did I even put it in the right place? Yeah, I did. You know, I love the idea of the little sticky notes that they had, but it does just make more sense to type anywhere that's the most yeah. comfortable yeah. <laughs> <laughs> need like Need like uh, quadrants or something. Yeah. Uh, whatever that is, but six. <laughs> Hexadrants. Oh, goodness. Okay. Now, if I understand, yeah, one dice to change an aspect, two to support a cause. How is the rolling part? And this is where my brain has to like properly adapt this to roll 20. Okay. Um, so I think I'm gonna roll two dice. Architecture, you're gonna roll two dice. Energy, roll 1d4 and agriculture, roll 1d4. Okay, should we go in order or do you wanna just go now? Uh, at your leisure. Okay. So I have to figure out how the math works again. Yay, uh, the math. Um, what what do I roll again? Uh, you roll. Yeah, is each die a d4? They're all d4s. Yeah. Okay, so you'd roll. I think two d4 since you have two dice in architecture. Yes. Only one of us in architecture rolls it. Whoever has like whoever owns the whoever owns the aspect. Uh, yeah. yeah. Owns the aspect. Which is me, right? Yes. 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 You own architecture. Yes. I forgot to have chat open, so I rolled twice. Just <laughs> pick one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't see what's happening. <laughs> oh, right, it's in chat. <laughs> so I think if this is right, so we've got a three. I'm gonna put a little bloop on a three. We've got a one. We're only gonna take one of Jamie's ones. We've got Jordan, you got a one and a four. A one and a four. And I'm gonna roll two d4s. Three and a one. Oh dear. Oh man, one is stacking up. Mm. Oh no. <laughs> mm. Interesting. And a three. Are they pillaring? Is that what you're saying? They are <laughs> pillaring. There's at least three snails that are on top of each other and it's just like a gross slimy mess, but it also is very artistically impressive. You know, I, I look back with my, my finger, my thumb on my chin impressively as I, I consider artistically. <laughs> also, thank you for the raid, the lovely. Ah! Hey, thanks. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Consider the slime. Consider the slime. We're doing a, a, a marathon to raise money for the longest day and end ALZ. That's, that's our goal. 
Yes, it is. We have been doing absolutely wonderful so far. We have hit, I don't actually have my glasses. I have a hard time seeing uh, numbers I can't see. zoom in on. I can tell you in just a second, let me refresh it. We are at uh, $1,235 raised out of our $10,000 goal. So thank you, everybody. Ah, yes. Thank you. Y'all, that's wonderful. Yes, uh, first hour and a half. That's amazing. Yeah, really sure. great. Thank you all. Seriously. Also, yes. Uh, welcome for the good cause. Stay for the puns. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Turn two. So now this is going to be moving a little bit faster. So we should just yeah. be able, we're going to go whatever we consider clockwise, um, one at a time. We're going to draw a cracks in our facade, talk about how it impacts our society, place dice, resolve. Okay. So who would like to go next? Uh, sorry, what was the next thing we do? We are all drawing some cracks in our society, but like one at a time. Okay. Um, so I've oh. technically gone first. Should we get rid of the ones that are already done? Yep. Okay, I'm, cool. I'm deleting. Oh, cool. You got it. Nice. Uh, yeah. If you want to just choose clockwise for us, uh, speedy raindrop. We'll, we'll go. We'll go in the order you give us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's more for the person to read because, like, we all have to kind of. Oh sure. Uh no wait um memory brain thinking I think we're at the part of the game where this impacts the person directly. Oh, yes. Oh, neat. Okay. Okay. So, Kipper. Yes. Is this big enough that you can read it on screen yet? Yes. Okay. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it got so much bigger. An unpopular subculture within the city is holding a festival, and some members of the community have shown up to try and shut it down. Ooh. What is the subculture, and why is it looked down upon? Hmm. A subculture. I mean, we've I would... already established the shell list, but it almost seems, is it too easy just to make them like part of this? I think maybe there is a different kind of subculture um, that reveres the, the lightning rods that have been kind of privatized in a way. Coil heads. Uh, just the what? Coil. The coil heads. The coil oh. heads. <laughs> I'm putting a little list. idea out there as a... Uh, I think the the coil heads are holding a festival uh, and I think some of the more downtrodden the lower in society not necessarily shellless uh, are there to kind of say no this is also a part of the issue uh, and I think this subculture because it reveres this privatization of energy and that aspect uh it especially for the lower few lower lot mm. not few uh <laughs> it is looked down upon because they are almost revering those above them i i bet also that it feels like the coil heads are unpopular kind of at all levels of society because mm -hmm. they're they're sort of like technophiles and they they would be pushing to like have us really like industrialize more. So the 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 people at the bottom see them as like supporting the people at the top because that's where the energy comes from. But the people right. at the top see them as sort of rabble rousers mm -hmm. who like yeah yeah. All right, so I just want to interject. Um, somebody in chat mentioned hermit crabs, and I think like one or two of the coil heads are just like hermit crabs. Like they just happen to be there and like we're already upset at them because like they've taken part of that aspect of society and then second of all they're not even snails how do you know, do right? fellow snail <laughs> how oh. dare they <laughs> how they <even> dare <laughs> we just allow it there because we're not really sure i don't think we have proper security in this uh in icarus so yeah. we um, just allow it so at this point does kipper say what she would try to do to affect this in a way? I think I, you know, I, I read rules, but I don't like read them all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's I scroll. like your style, B. I like your style. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> On your turn, you can enact a change or support a cause. Starting with the first player, move clockwise around the table. Uh, we've done that already. 
Resolve. At the end of the round, once all players have taken an action and answered a story card. Oh, did I just get this wrong? I literally played this like a week ago. What's a story <laughs> card? I want that. Right? What did I miss? I didn't miss anything. I'm pretty sure the cracks in our facades are the story cards. Okay. That okay. makes I mean this sounds like a story card. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Game is tripping me up. Um <laughs> Move clockwise, resolving the changes each chair each player wants to make. They should play at their scene in an attempt at change, yet yeah, evoking or role playing with their character, what they are trying to do. When the scene reaches its climax, the player or player supporting the change with the die should describe what success looks like. Oh, right. I mean, our society has changed a little bit. When all dice have been resolved, first player privileges are passed to the left. So we passed it to Jamie and it continues. Um, okay, well, let's just keep doing it how we've been doing. Okay, cool. so go ahead. What do we can unanimously decide um, based off of what Kipper has kind of established with these, um, what do we call them again? Coil heads? Coil heads. <laughs> yes. Um, and like you, Kipper, you still get the first move. So you get to either make a change with your dice and we can back it or we can be like, no, no, no. I interpret that affecting another aspect of our society. Ooh, uh, I, Kipper is going to move her dice over to architecture uh, with these coil heads showing up and revering this electricity etc uh it it's too she thinks they are taking it too far that uh if we can keep things orderly in a way uh that we can move ahead we can't go too far into chaos with electricity etc cetera, etc cetera. all right so you are putting your dice behind architecture is supporting the um building height oh heck yeah okay or so you know what i guess that would be energy huh i think that would be i'm gonna um, move it to energy instead okay this is me struggling with dice still i think unfortunately folks get to see our roll 20 now <laughs> yeah <laughs> just a lot of dice moving i promise it's much more comprehensive with the physical dice in person uh-huh yeah. <laughs> what's in person oh i couldn't tell <laughs> you to know. it's been a little while since i figured that one out i don't know when to stop counting oh man <sighs> okay, okay so who, go who goes next would you like to go next so oh, okay. we're also we have to move our dice and we have to put either our support behind kipper or make some changes so uh shan uh, feels that the direction that Kipper and this uh, group wants to go makes sense, but he doesn't think the education is there yet to make this change. If we do it now, it's going to be dangerous and unsafe. So I think he's going to put uh, his dice on education to say like, we've been teaching farming and stuff, but we haven't done proper education to develop this technology in a way that uh, is safe and beneficial to everybody. So he's going to push for education making a change before we can get to energy making a change. Hell yeah, that aligns so well with your motive. Like, Shan, you're just looking out for the civilians. Yeah, gotta protect everybody. <laughs> nice and slow as a snail does. Uh, be safe. <laughs> Heck yes. What about Zelda? Do you oh. want to put your support behind either the changes for education? Do you want to put your support behind... Um, continuing to ensure that the energy powers don't rise. I don't even know how to properly phrase that. Yeah, that um, we keep the energy at bay. Um, yes, I would actually like to put my hat behind that. I know I do run the education sector, but I have a feeling that I would like to keep things a little more status quo um, and uh, see how that goes. Hell yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I think um track sees this this attempt at leveling society as 
as really anti-progressive because his <laughs> mentality of progression is is growing higher it's it's getting the peaks of where our society can go to the heights and eventually hitting the canopy which is like a dream you know that's generations away but like if we could hit the canopy we would be the perfect snails and i think that he uh believes that so he would be he would more support shan in this because i think even though shan and him kind of um like butt heads sometimes uh we both are sort of uh, like for building the the like power of the society obviously you've you've stopped the architecture from getting too much higher but i think i would go uh, I, I would put my support behind the education reform because i feel like people have have not been understanding uh the importance of letting society like grow of of like bidding things up yes can i actually switch can i go back and also be in support of education <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <It's>, yes yes <laughs> no but only since shan is wanting to slow it down and i like that we need to spend a little more time re-educating people about how to build slowly, even more slowly as we snail. Slowly um, but correctly, you know, like properly. Slowly but correctly, but correctly, like how I think correctly. <laughs> <laughs> you schemer. <laughs> I think so. I think I shall stay in the education sector. I love that because I wanted to approach that kind of the same angle as you, like, I believe, you know, as somebody who works at the arts, that education, if we're going to have these radical changes, they're not actually radical, um, by preserving what we have and modifying our education just a little bit, that seems like monumental change from my perspective. And especially if it aligns with how we can perhaps reintroduce art as a good thing, that's kind of what Speedy is going to back. Um, but they might not hear the whisperings of the... Um, Oh, the truth uh, behind the educational system in Icarus, you know, the, the giant booming from up ahead where they're revealing that like, we don't actually teach you anything. The water might not actually kill you. But I, I don't hear that. <laughs> Back my dice behind education. All, All right, right, I think we have Tom. one more dice. Did I miss somebody? Yeah, Fizzy Tom. Yeah, Fizzy. Fizzy, Fizzy Tom. Fizzy is going to, um, Back education as well. Okay. How does that affect you? Does that like intersect with any of your motives? We have hermit crabs. Hermit crabs can be in salt water. <laughs> oh. As far as I know. Interesting. I think they're in salt water. I think totally. so. I think you're right. Totally. Yeah, so I think so. These they can. are at least in Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> true. Yes. True. So. I, yep. If that's the case, maybe we should be working together in order to, you know, find, learn more about the ocean and see whether or not we could maybe over time reduce the amount of salt in the water for our civilization whilst giving the hermit crabs a civilization that will be more appropriate for their water needs. Mm. Hell yeah. And that technology would... Uh, be a really good get rich quick scheme or get rich quick easy <laughs> tom slow. i was like oh she, they're they're <laughs> building alliances and then <laughs> oh wait oh, no, oh no. sorry there's a scheme oh, I, said, I like it <laughs> I, I, said, I said the quiet part loud full <laughs> scheme. scheme ahead <laughs> see you're just like bubbling we can hear all your words it is cool it's oh. fine um also can i shout dom really quickly how long does this game run until how long, how long do I, I have? Think one. What like is another, that in Eastern time? Another oh. hour. So one hour from now, ish. Thank you, okay. 4 p.m. EDT. Thank you, chat, for telling me in my time zone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't math, can't convert anything. Okay, I think we're- <laughs> what is time to you? So tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow. Oh boy. <laughs> it is Sunday. We're having a great time. Oh, it is not real. Um, okay, we are going to be a little bit more um, generous with our dice then. I think we're going to roll one dice per aspect. So Kipper, I'm going to have you roll 
1d4, and we're going to get that 1d4 from Sean. Okie dokie. Instead of rolling all of them. I got a one. Oh, oh boy. Goals. And did you need, you wanted me to roll one as well, yes? Oh, yes, please. I rolled a three. Yes, thank you. Um, One's looking stacked. The cheater yeah. and me might like take one from one. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what the dice do. I like the tension of like, things are already getting really bad. Yeah. We've got hermit crabs invading. It's so much muddier underfoot. It hasn't rained in so long. We're thirsty. We're hungry. Communications is getting a little bit more staticky. And there are so many protests. I don't know what's happening. Mm, yeah. Oh, again, it still it still sounds too real. Very relatable content. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, say, I was yeah. like, I. <laughs> oh. This game is supposed to take you out of reality, all. <laughs> we just keep making it over and over again. <laughs> uh jordan what were you gonna say i was gonna say we the so we're replacing these dice to enact changes on the different aspects we can also do the the communication one too right can we I don't... that's not a person oh the main pillar i think so yeah oh we definitely can make changes about that one that's good i was... to know actually yeah that's a yeah tend oh. to forget about it um yeah. okay whoever wants the responsibility of updating education <laughs> I uh, would really respect you. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of respect your way. Uh, the snail game is getting pretty topical. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Jordan, why don't you go next? Pull us a... Or whoever is not writing in the education. I don't know who was. All right. Oh, I'll, I'll yeah. go. We're, we're doing... This is the... Um, Cracks in our facade. Cracks in our facade. All right, I drew one. It says, oh, an outside force has come to the city to negotiate a deal. Who are they and what do they want? I think we should lean into the hermit crabs. That like, makes sense. I think they've been coming and maybe, maybe they want us to stop building this flood wall. And they're saying like, yeah, no, we could live together. Like, we'll just take the bottom part where oh. we're like, um, There'll be salt water. You guys have all this up part. You have everything above. Uh, and maybe they are kind of against us like having the entire, uh, and and maybe there's m even belief in some parts of our society that, that they are causing the sea to rise to like help spread their own territory. And like, they live peacefully with us, but I think that there is tension between our, our different societies. Yeah, and they have like these lovely long shells too. And they find shells. Where are they finding shells? <gasps> the shell list, that's where they're going. Yeah. Oh, that's where yeah. shells are disappearing too. Because yeah. they can't make shells. We make shells. Make shell. We make the shell. They take the shell. Are we getting paid any mushrooms for this? <laughs> <laughs> they probably have a different currency. <laughs> My mushroom load isn't getting any bigger, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's going on here? <laughs> we, we live sort of like a symbiotic connection with the hermit crabs because they, the smaller shells that we end up like, if, uh, that we end up not needing for our architecture, they use to like, uh, you know, be their shells. But maybe there's also like rumors amongst some people that they've like uh, killed people to get shells when like the numbers yeah. aren't high enough and things well, they, like that. They, they probably attack the shell list that come to the ocean because they're they're easy pickings. They're already out of their defensive mechanism and they can just grab them. And because they're shell list, maybe people don't care because they are sort of like a rebellious faction that is sort oh. of a, a problem in society. No, I love them and I want to protect them. <laughs> they're the vulnerable members of our society. Oh. They are, they are. <laughs> Heckin' hermit crabs, why are you taking advantage of people? Yeah. <laughs> Coming into our town, taking our shells, beating up our folks, throwing them into the water. <laughs> I can't. It hurts my heart. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, How did they get so smart? It's that education. It's because they didn't have a limiting education like us. Um, 
Uh-huh. I'm not calling um, Zelda out or anything. I was like, what? Did someone say something about education? <laughs> As we all realize, so we can't. We're only going to have charter education. Oh, and... oh no! Oh boy! What? Did I say something wrong? <laughs> I shall go back to my yacht. <laughs> Also, the idea of a snail on a yacht in the ocean where it is yes. so dangerous is just <laughs> there's Coming a on scene the edge for sure where like they're on the beach kind of like snailing up to the to the dock and there's just like fizzy tom with their chef hat like fizzing around by the water like hey you want to buy some information and they'll just like <laughs> no i'm better than that and they just like scoot up to their oh. yacht <laughs> see how it is i see how it is <laughs> Fine, busy. Maybe you could make me something. You have a great little chef hat. Do you cook? <laughs> oh yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I might have some work for you. Oh, it's like a Let's yacht talk. cook. <laughs> I have been saved. I will have nourishment. You have plenty of mushrooms aboard. <gasps> I like the sound of this. It's like a chance only you two will survive the fall of our society then. <laughs> Perfect safety. That's oh, my plan. On this yacht with nothing but mushrooms and fizzy tom and Zelda. <laughs> oh, heck. You'll be in mushroom soup for life. <laughs> All right. So what do we want to back? Do we want to make any changes? Do we want to support? Um, starting with um, track. You have the first dice. So the card that you drew with these intruders, the hermit crabs, that is now fact. This is something that we are dealing with. How in Trax's rather conservative, uh, conservative opinion, how has this changed some of our aspects and what are the consequences? Um, I... Maybe, okay, so maybe because of the, uh, like, the, the fact that the, the hermit crabs have been coming more, um, safety has started to become paramount on the minds of the, the people at the top. And they have started commanding uh, that, uh, like, everyone stay vigilant uh, against the hermit crabs, because the hermit crabs aren't part of our, our, our they, they, they can't feel the shell shocks. They, oh. they, they don't feel this greater society that we are, even though they are in our shells sometimes. So they have started sending out, so I, I think I will propose a change to safety um, that is just that uh, P I guess I don't know exactly how to word it. But just that society is, um, what, I feel like I want to have like something specific that's going on. Uh, maybe, maybe, um, maybe people are now supposed to like kind of report through the shell shocks where her the hermit crabs are in society all the time. A snitch line? Kinda. But it's, it's just like they have like a constant GPS going on just by like, if you see them, just just say where they are so that we know what areas we can, you know, be safe in. I hate our leaders. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's not good. If you see something, say something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like education is behind this. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow intersects. Um. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. That can be a change that the the rampant um, hermit crabs have kind of evoked within our safety that in order to preserve what we view as safety, you know, we have to start reporting, like connecting to the, to the um, what was the proper name for it? Or like the, a hive the... mind? Uh, did we, oh, uh, Snadar. Snadar? Yes. Snadar, right? Yeah. Yeah, Snadar. Snadar, yes it was. Uh, when we connect to the uh, Snadar, 
Um, honestly, I got really focused on what I was thinking about, not what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I feel like I, I should just uh, address this to make sure, but I know we had racism as one of our lines. And, and if we are getting too close to that for like anybody's comfort or stuff, we can, we can pivot away from that for sure. Thank you for the check-in. I will give uh, an okay in chat. All right. Thank you for the check-in. Yeah, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no, I realized as chat was making like uh, like the South Park jokes of like, they took our gerbs. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. How else? So who else would like to throw their support or evoke some changes? Kipper. Uh, Kipper sees the danger in this seawater coming in this salt water, uh, not in just that we would lose farming because it would destroy the soil, uh, but it would also erode any buildings, any type of societal uh, structure on the lowest level, even if the hermit crabs take over. Uh, so she is going to back some architecture change in that she rallies the shellless to uh, begin sliming on structures at the lowest level to start protecting and building up a cover for them oh, I love in that. case the sea does encroach. If the hermit crabs get what they wish, we're going to protect what we've got down here anyway. Love, love, love that. Um... Uh, I, I think I think Shan is going to back that. That makes a lot of sense for his motive to protect the citizens. And this this salt tide of the ocean is inevitable. Like it's going to happen whether in the next hundred years, next thousand years, it's going to happen. And we need to build to prepare for that. And because we build so slowly, we need to start now or it's never going to be finished by the time it actually happens. Um, but also he'd like to maybe... Uh, you know, the, the, these hermit crabs are unknown to us a little bit, and he sees them as sort of a danger, but he doesn't want to completely say no to them. But, you know, maybe we can build something together that helps both sides. So architecture right now, I think, and starting now would be very important. So he's going to put his die in architecture. Dang. Also, I'm remembering, I forgot a, a maybe important rule. Oh. Uh, we, not everything succeeds, and I've just let it all succeed because I forgot that it doesn't. Oh. Um, and I don't actually understand how I'm supposed to abridge this to the online version. Um, I think going forward, what we can do is let us roll a d8 instead, because that gives it a 50% uh, pass-fail. Okay. Oh yeah, sure. Right. We'll roll a d8, and then if it hits the like one, two, three, or four, it it goes on there. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome! Yep. I think that makes a little bit more sense. Um, because I'm thinking to myself, like, wow, we've had so many changes in our society. I wonder about the changes that didn't happen. And then you know, my brain catches up with my thoughts. <laughs> and it's just like, whoops. Uh, <laughs> so, with that being said, fingers crossed that tracks plan for their horrible version of um life for hermit crabs and everybody else doesn't succeed. <laughs> well, I mean, he, he, here's what Track thinks about everything. Track believes that there is a way for our society to work. We don't need the bottom level of society if we continue building up and everyone starts building their way upwards. The, it's, it's, uh, it's, we're caught in our old ways of thinking that we still need the ground. The ground is where we started and we have for generations built our way up to the top. Uh, <laughs> The fact, you know, the people who want us to stop growing, you know, rising our spirals, they're the ones who are holding our society back and stopping this flood wall or making this flood wall necessary. If we were spending those resources on building up like we have since the great spike of awakening fell, then there would be no problem. That's how Track sees it. <laughs> Track is so darn, like, darn charismatic. Uh, I'm sure that he has- <laughs> He's quite a politician, yeah. 
many a he snail. believes very strongly in in what he has has uh what he espouses i could feel that <laughs> kissy tom is gonna go all in on this architecture business because the more people give up their uh give up their shells the more hermit crabs can buy these shells and that's only positive oh i mean of course there's also slime on the walls which is great for safety <laughs> also that's a thing yeah. <laughs> safety right uh... slime is safety i like slime. that i feel like those would be some like slogans i'll teach the kids oh my gosh we definitely have like a yellow triangle on the wall that just says slime is safety Aww. oh I believe in it. And I want that in like my background. <laughs> All right. I think I might be the only person who hasn't moved. Um, oh gosh, now there's still a little dice everywhere. So it looks like we have three dice in architecture. Does that track so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We should have two in safety because I think it was Kipper who had originally I was doing slime on the architecture. Oh, oh, okay. So one of those is me. I did architecture oh. as well, so that's two. And two I did for, architecture as well. So that's three for architecture. Dang. Track, you did safety, right? Yes. So track did safety. And Zelda, you did? I thought I did whatever you did. Whatever was I did? Another, was that another round? Or was I, I thought I was jumping in and supporting you, but that- You, you did that last round for education. Got it. Okay. I don't have the same visual cue, so thank oh, you right. for- helping um okay Ooh, what do i want so i have so i i'm almost kind of like a deciding dice i'm either going to split this even in half or... oh i mean architecture is taking it all anyways yeah yeah <laughs> so let's hop in an architecture i'll join that bandwagon um i feel like there's always a way to bring things down through structures and architecture is a great way to do that that's similar um, to how i believe unfortunately just mm -hmm. you know same thoughts different boat yep <laughs> Same okay. different yacht. <laughs> ha. I, I think all these yes. changes to to architecture track is is everyone is like making changes and pushing from different sides of society. And track is like no, the fact that we're not building up, that we're 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 dividing our resources and our our manpower so much, that's going to to stop us. Like we're going to fall behind. <laughs> I just need change. I'm not supporting this for the same reason as you track. I just, we need some change around here. Understood. Yeah, we do need change. <laughs> Everybody's iteration of it is very different. <laughs> okay, so with the new dice rolling that I've just decided, track, you are going to roll one, two, three, four, five D8. And five D8. Kipper, one D8, please. All right. Ooh, damn. Of the 5d8, I got a four and a three. Excellent. That's a pretty good roll, JP. Yeah. Four <laughs> and a three. Okay. And from Kipper? From me, a d8. Eight. So your, your plan for safety will not it didn't pass like the council of snails, uh, you know, that, that organism that we often kind of shout our ideas to for some <laughs> reason, it just like got blocked halfway down. Even the organism was like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> However, the architecture changes for that aspect track. How, how can you, what do these changes look like? I think is probably the best question. So okay, let's let's go over the like proposed changes. Please, there was a handful. About. So only two out of the five are going to succeed. Is what's happening here? Yes. Gotcha. And he and Tracks can get to choose which two because he's yep. the he's the owner of the pill. That's really cool. I like yep. that. Oh yeah. Okay. And I, oh, I didn't really want yeah. any of them, so that's interesting. <laughs> um. Uh. So we can just go down from the top and just say our idea again. Please. Um. I'm just trying to remember mine. I remember one was that like slime coating is being put in, yes. in all of yeah. the buildings Yep. as a way to like kind of keep the crabs from, what, what was the purpose? It, it was, was to protect in case 
everything with the hermit crabs went through, protect the buildings from erosion from salt water encroaching. Yes, perfect. And I really wanted up. to put, yeah, like that's kind of what I wanted to support, but I wanted it to be artistic. Like them snails have to do it from the straight lines. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. And I wanted, I wanted to support the same thing, but I want it so that I can like take the shells and sell them to the crabs. <laughs> I wanted everyone to seal themselves in. <laughs> Um, I, I, I was backing the same idea, but for, for more defensive uh, from not just the ocean, but also the hermit crabs in case something oh. happens. Okay, so let's, let's interpret it like this and tell me if I'm doing this wrong, but let's say that, that we, we've added slime to the walls and that we've, we've created doors at the bottom of our, uh, our like towers that we've never had before, like things that we can actually seal off the entrance so that if the water comes, we can finally just go close it up and people will have to like go up that way. How do we open doors? That's not important. It's fine. We have doors. I'm imagining like a little ramp that you walk up and as the next person follows you up the ramp, it like just goes ka -chunk. <laughs> <laughs> like like um yeah it, it's it's like a teeter totters that you go from yeah. one into the other it goes Aww. we call those doors though. They're really just teeter totters. <laughs> yeah. <Little> door. <laughs> Cutest thing I've ever. Oh, so cute! I just want to see a little little snail with a little chef hat go through a little Peter Totter door. <laughs> so, so d does that work? Does that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So basically, pick out what you'd like to reflect that architecture from what we've given you. You don't have. You can give boons to other characters if track so sees fit. Um, but and what what does that like mean? The boons to other characters. Uh, it's more of a narrative play, like Fizzy. What did you want again? You wanted a way to monetize this, right? Yes, yes I did. If track you provided that somehow, um, that's just like a narrative flair that. We okay, give I don't to... think track would would mod. I, I don't think track would reward that. No offense, Fizzy hey. Tom, <laughs> but but Bye. track is very much like of the mentality that we are building this for the greater good of society. Um, but I think. Track would, I, I think Track would award the idea that we wanted the defenses. Who, who mentioned that? That was, uh, that was uh, Shan. Yeah, I, I think he would, he would reward Shan and be like, fine, I agree. I've always thought that like eventually the lower levels wouldn't be needed anymore. So cutting it off is something that I think that the architects are willing to do. Uh, In the name of protecting the citizens, right? <laughs> In the name of protecting the citizens and, and the high life of our of our city. Don't, don't when you say high life, it, it, it's, it's not good. I don't like you saying that word because it, it, it says that there is low life, which is bad. Shan, should just be life. Shan, eventually we'll all be part of high life. We're, we're working on building our way up through the great spirals. Don't you see? Staying on the ground and keeping that as an option is what's holding us back. That's the reason we fear the oncoming sea. I understand. I just want you to get away from prefixes because there should just be life. If it's just high life, let's call it life. There's no high, high life, no low life, no midlife, just life. Fine. So All life saying. can be high. Okay. You need to. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a politician. <laughs> We're all just like, we've got our ears pressed to like the plant, like, oh, wow, I, I live for this tea. <laughs> all conversations are had in public. I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm really feeling the shell shocks here. Shell yes. shocks. <laughs> uh, and in my mind, I'm like, all life can be dead life. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, it's not worrying at all. All right, who would like to go next? Uh. I'll go next. Percy, Zelda, Sean, yeah. Uh, I, I draw the card? Yes, please. And this is the facade? Yeah. Cracks in our facade, okay. Uh, draw one. Actually, you know what? Oh. We're gonna speed things up a little bit. Um, and, unless the cracks in our facade was really good, I'm instead gonna have- I haven't draw. drawn it yet, so, so up to you. Ooh. Can you pull a card from the rifts between us then? <gasps> oh, sure, absolutely. Ooh. The rifts between us, draw. Do I show this to everybody? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna draw this card. Let's take a look at it. And I'm gonna just drop it here. Give it a good read for everybody and then else. If you can resize it, I don't think I, I'm allowed to resize things. I just dropped it at the top left. It's gonna be giant. That's fine. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, a curfew is decreed upon the citizens of the city. What happened to cause it and how is it enforced? Mm. 
mm. curfew. Huh. Mm. Uh, and I decide this, or are we all deciding this? I decide this. Okay, a curfew. Why would a curfew exist? Um, Isn't your pillar of safety, right? Yeah, my pillar is safety. So, I mean, that makes sense. I'm trying to figure out what the danger in that sense would be. Crabs? Tides? Are, are the crab citizens of the city? The curfew has to be because of rioting. Um, I think there is a lot of unease about a new organism, a new type of life joining our society. And some, some of the snail society doesn't feel comfortable with it yet and are lashing out in uh, ways of uh, maybe they're uh, doing some sort of uh, vandalism uh, towards whatever structures the hermit, uh, hermit crabs have built. The they're newly like, built, like gummied up uh, structures they're already yeah. being. Yeah, like I, I think the the slime things that we have built, maybe we are also using that to enforce and help our new our new uh, friends that we have met, you know. And uh, some of the snails just don't feel the same way. They they feel endangered because there are, you know, some of these hermit crabs have eaten snails before, and they don't feel safe having them around. So it's like, you know, why are we letting these these literal uh, apex predators into our society when they could be a danger? Even though we probably at this point form some sort of truce, saying like we'll help each other out, but we can't we can't have each other fighting. So I think a rioting and uh, yeah, rioting is probably the, the, the cause of concern to make a curfew happen. And we don't want to be eaten by the, by the hermit crabs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so how is it enforced? Um, if you're found out past a certain time, I guess we know what time is, um, you uh, are maybe, I don't know, an extreme version would this be, it would be like, banishment or something, you know, uh, out to the edges. Ooh. Banishment to the salt sprays. Mm -hmm. Salt sprays? Oh, is that like a death condemnation? Yeah, well, uh, is that too extreme? That it might could be, be too extreme. I mean, we, we have doors on our towers now. Mm -hmm. It could just be like that we close the doors after a certain time. Oh, yeah. Sure. But it's so that means solution. so that means the ones that are left outside are stuck until the next day, and they don't get to eat or something like because they're stuck outside. They are stuck to, to the elements at that point, you know. Sure. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. That feels extreme. <laughs> that is extreme. See, so you like when, it, right, Zelda? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I was thinking salt sprays, I was more thinking like, you know how. Um, over time, stone kind of gets eaten away by the ocean. It doesn't mm -hmm. entirely crumble until a lot later, but it's just po um, yeah. pockmarked. Right. Leaving, oh leaving a snail out isn't going to kill them. Oh. It's just going to, you know, leave them fizzy. Yeah. <laughs> that fizzy top. I was wondering if that was something that was connected. I really did. If you're able to be by the ocean and by the salt, like you're gonna get a little, be a little, little singed. Little yeah, thing. yeah. <laughs> Some like later rusty. Winds just push like the the misty salt water across yeah. our our little clearing. Um, and if you're not locked in home with the little door teeter totters, then mm -hmm. you get a little fizzy. <laughs> and like the first time this happens, like we all wake up in the morning, like we go outside. It's just like. Is that Fizzy Tom? No, that's Fizzy Tom. Oh, Fizzy no, Tom's got the hat. hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I imagine it's like getting a sunburn for a snail, right? You know, like yeah. you're like exposed to the wrong elements a little bit and you get a little, a little crispy. Yeah. A little bit of steam. Uh-huh. That's so sad, but so cute. <laughs> Okay, so that was the curfew that we have. Um, so we know why it happened and how it's enforced with the doors. So how does this intersect, Sean, with perhaps like your safety pillar or like how does this enact changes within our aspects? Um, I mean, so the curfew is made to protect the citizens. I mean, that's okay. what Shan wants to do. The curfew is to protect people to say like, hey, be inside at a certain point. So you are not in danger of anything. Even if there are like rogue elements of those hermit crabs who are like, no, we want to eat snails. Like that's also a possibility, you know? There could just be 
on the same on the on the other side, the same thing could be happening that they don't agree with uh, with us either. So I think there's rebels on both sides. And, oh, absolutely. Uh, We're only getting the snail side of the story. So like, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So the curfew is made to protect the citizens. Um, I guess the change I would be putting the die into, um, hmm, it would be either safety or, you know what, I think communication is where he wants to put this to say that this is to, he communicates, he tries to communicate this as well as he can, like putting up flyers and putting out uh, waves uh, out of out of Snadar to say like, hey, this is your 30 minute warning, 15 minute warning, like get inside, um, doing every sort of uh, a, a little step that he can to make sure that everybody gets inside at the right time. And he probably has a little leniency, like 30 minutes late, fine, you're still inside, you know, like, but he wants to make sure that it's it's safe and not as strict, but safety is, is king here. So he's gonna actually put it in uh, communication, I think, to communicate that this isn't to punish people, this is to protect people. Yeah, I mean, gosh, like, B thinks that's wonderful, but what does Speedy think? How does this benefit <laughs> the arts? Yeah. And my motivation for change. I mean, it probably limits the arts because now you can't do it past a certain time. You're stuck inside. Right. So that's something to think about. Oh. Is, yeah, I don't know. Is Shen um safety or energy uh i put it in communication to say that he's okay. uh this curfew but, is but energy to, is your your energy is your energy, energy is my field right. but i i can put yeah. the die in anything right yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah, yeah yeah but energy is my field yes um so i i have an idea which would be another die that's a change to communication Ooh. which is that because of the curfew and because of these riots and things going on um, they've instituted something that's like unheard of in our society, which is an hour of shell shock silence every night. Oh, interesting. Which is basically like a complete shutdown of communications just so that like the people who are like the watchers, whoever is watching our society will have like full ability to like say if something goes on. Damn, but just good. for like one hour a night, but it's still like a big unprecedented thing because the free flow of communication is such a huge part of who we've always been. Yeah, I don't know if Speedy likes that idea. I imagine we're all sitting in like snail council and like track proposes that. No, yeah. Speedy's gonna shake their head very fast. <laughs> it does seem a bit extreme. Can, I, can huh. I propose a shift from for communication to weakness? Because with all of these changes to communication, we're changing how we are. And now we've got the shellless, how we communicate with the entire population is changing. Hmm. Oh, not, also, we can't even talk to the hermit crabs. Like We can't talk to the hermit crabs. We can't talk to the shellless because they don't have shells. How are they hearing what's coming, you know, coming through Snadar? That's mm -hmm. true. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Goodness. So I did look up how shell, how snails actually communicate, and it is through pheromones coming out. But also the trails that they leave can be sort of uh, you can no pick way. up pheromones and messages through the trails. So that is the other way that they that they communicate. I'm not saying we have to do the same thing, but that's how they do it if they're not using snadar. Snails are cool. They're really very cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dang. I mean, like, what's my name? Snail again? Speedy. Mail, yeah. Snail. Mail. <laughs> Speedy loves the idea that like, cause again, like my motive is for change. Like I constantly need things for us to change, ideally for the better, uh, ideally for the arts. And I don't see how this communication necessarily benefits the arts, but it does benefit the change that our society um, needs. So I will blindly throw my backing behind that. Kipper on the other hand, in order to preserve everyone in this society uh, and her shellless uh, is actually going to back art uh, because of the like graffiti earlier in the new trails and using those as a communication, we need to put time and effort into the pheromones and the trail in order for all of the shellless to be able to comply with uh, this safety centered, um, curfew 
Hell yeah. yeah. I like that. That's really beautiful. Can I take my support for you? <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, I, I honestly thought most people, more people would be against curfew just because it's limiting on a lot of these, but it's interesting. I mean, you put like, it's so intertwined with a necessity of our civilization that even mm-hmm. though the consequences are bad, I feel like in order for us to still continue and operate, we have to make those changes. And this is why our society is declining a little bit. Yeah. It, the, the curfew feels very much like, um, oh, what is that book? H.G. Wells. The Time Machine? Time machine. Yes, with the two societies. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, and, you know, and because where it's like the, lock yourself away for the night because that's the dangerous time. The Morlocks come out in the yes. middle of the night and they they eat people. Yeah. Hermit crabs, man. <laughs> they intense. <laughs> okay, I think we're missing. I think I've got two rogue dice still. Yeah. No, I've got one rogue dice still. I think that's Zelda, because Zelda, you have no vision. <laughs> uh, yep, so I don't, it's like, I don't know what's happening, but I like hearing everything, all the options. And I shall try to join the one that shall topple society. Okay, <laughs> um, uh, let's see. I do like this communication silence thing. I feel like that's a good time to get bad things done. I mean, good get things done. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I think that uh, there's something about having that space of silence where I could potentially get some hench people to handle some things. Oh my goodness. And if no one is going to communicate that during that time, I think that would be the time to do it. Hell yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. Communication, you have a lot to consider. Um, so Sean, you're going to be acting as if communication was yours because I think okay. this had been your, your main card that you had drawn. Yeah. Um, yeah, dang, depending on your level of successes, this will be interesting what you take from our suggestion box. Mm-hmm. Um, and arts is me. We got 2d8. Okay, so I'll roll 4d8. There's a one in there. Oh, no. That's not four. Three more. Okay, so I got eight. Uh, only one of these ideas is going to make it. I only got one four. Ooh. Okay, uh, let's resolve that first. Okay. I mean, the, the general idea of the curfew is probably the only one. I didn't really like the hour of silence um, because I felt like that was just too limiting. Um, so I guess it should just be the... longer is what you're saying. <laughs> uh, no. Um, so yeah, I think maybe just the general idea of the curfew happening is the only one that really goes through here. Um, yeah. So oh. that's that's the only one out of four I have here. Okay. Wonderful. Um, and because we do have a little bit more time with the game, we're going to pretend like that one was uh, a two. Yeah. Okay. We'll, just, we'll just put that right there. Um, but that was a success. Um, so Kippy or Kipper, excuse me, um, can you reiterate kind of like our, what we planned for the arts? Like the, yeah, uh, I think rallying the artists that are there to help us with these new trails and putting out the pheromones to lead the shellless any of those who cannot communicate with shell shock um to the society and what time it is in order that everyone can comply if wanted with curfew oh i love that so i'm writing pheromone art yes as a way to like like it's not communication because it's art first but art still communicates exactly (laughs) (laughs) okay i take it back i want to live with these snails (laughs) i know there's riots and chaos and things don't look great just realize this curfew is going to slow down our society so much because like (laughs) Because like you'd be like to, pretty slow. Because you have to you have to get back at a certain time, which means like you have to leave, start leaving like an hour or two before curfew just to be oh like, my okay. Goodness. Oh, Correct. Yeah. Correct. So this is probably really Correct. bad. Okay, yeah, Zelda. You're 
literally well, wring your hands. Okay. The, <laughs> it could potentially be good because it encourages people instead of going out and doing frivolous things, they could do the important things, which is circling the spiral. It's okay. Yeah, that's one way to look at it too. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Okay, we got about 15 minutes left. Just just putting it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we are going to draw. I can't remember whose turn it is to draw. Either Fizzy or Zelda. Zelda, you don't have roll 20. Uh, Kipper, have you gone yet? Yes. She yes. was the first one, yeah. Fizzy, can you please draw the final hours? Ooh. We're just going to oh, like go. speed through. We're going to get a sample of yeah. all this. Let's do it. I want to see how this fails. ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final hours. Um, so in theory, oh yeah, you got it. And then right click uh, to flip. And I'll zoom it. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. That is oh, come on. <laughs> That's too easy. Well, what happened? Someone read. Oh, yeah, we have to read this okay. out loud. So, <laughs> the physical land Icarus sits on has begun to erode or change beneath it, leaving parts of the city inaccessible to one another. What important area is now completely isolated, and what ramification does that have on the rest of the city? Could it be more perfect? But could wow. it be more perfect? <laughs> I mean, it's like it knows what we've been doing. <laughs> <that's> wild. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Heck. <laughs> do, do I need to say anything? So you just you decide how this goes out, Fizzy. Was but World I... 20 listening? Like, that's <laughs> what I want to know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's an intuitive app. Right? Dun, dun, dun. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess if you want to like reiterate, like visual, like give us the visual description of how this is a very immediate consequence of what we have to face. Okay, so those lovely teeter totters that we've had um, were poorly, poorly built. And so um, on, uh, as the tide comes in, water rushes through a teeter totter and comes in. Luckily, a lot of the population were in curfew. Oh. They were inside. Oh. However, it means that we now don't have the lower level. And because of the pillars, we've moved up slightly. So we can still move around somewhat, but you know, some of the agriculture has been cut off or the like the, the within the walls agriculture has been cut off. Some of what's going around has been cut off and we can all now see the ocean that is just sort of turned up and is in our community. Are we all a little fizzy now? <laughs> we are all a little fizzy. Everyone's yes. a little fizzy. I want a fizzy little afro on my snail head instead of like a snail hat. <laughs> just want a fizzy little afro. <laughs> um, okay, so where would you like to put a dice to reflect change based on the final hours? Um, I'd like, like this touches so many things. It does. Yeah. I think in those final hours. There is no point in preserving the city. There's no point in agriculture. There is little point in energy. There is little point in safety. The water is here. Um, architecture could get us higher. Art could make us feel better about the situation. Um, and education's scary right now. So... <laughs> Not going with that. <laughs> so I'm scared. So I'm going to go with architecture. And I think we would best be served using the shells of those we lost to raise the level of the community again. Oh, my goodness. So br break the, the limit on how high we can go and start, like, growing and start, start driving up. up again. Yeah. Return to the coil. Return to our spiral. Yeah. I, I think that track is going to support that. And this this is like radical for him, but his, his addition to things would be that we increase the angle that we have built our spiral at by like 15 degrees, which is unprecedented, but oh, the water no. came. Huge. <laughs> oh. 
We've never gone want... before seven degrees, more than seven degrees before. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? I need more drastic change than just, what did you say, 20 degrees? 15 degrees. 15. Let's, let's not be Whoa. crazy. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I, I mean, I'm going to need more than that. I really am. Um, I Speedy keeps looking down at the water that is you know, encompassing what we call the home, and I'm just listening to the rumbling of my stomach and all of the lost art, but most pressing is the rumbling of my little snail stomach, and I think I need to propose that with this change of landscape, um, kelp and seaweed rise to the surface, providing, um, I need something hopeful for us. I can't have this just like, <laughs> die, like drowning and hungry. I, I have oh. bad news about how this game ends. <laughs> 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 no, we won't oh. let it happen. Um, right. So Shan has a wild idea. I think with the water rising, his idea of a curfew did save a lot of lives, but it did also uh, send a lot of people to their deaths because they were outside during the curfew and they all washed away and were dead. So, you know, he maybe he still has that on, on his mind and he feels mm -hmm. guilty. And so his plan is to use, to siphon what energy we can from any thunderstorms to create some sort of machine that can desalinate the water around where we live. Uh, and in doing so, this will probably uh, kill a lot of the uh, hermit crabs that mm. are around us, but his motive is to protect the citizens of his society. And right now that is what he has to focus on. So I think he'll probably oh, send out a wave that. Uh, to send some sort of message to them. He can't send a wave to hermit crabs because they can't listen, but uh, he's kind of going mad scientist here to be like, no, I, we can fix this. This is totally fixable. And he's going to use the energy resources he has to try to desalinate the water and make society uh, still livable down there. We can live in that water if we can desalinate it. I love Chan, the don't visual. you see the bottom is lost? <laughs> no, we, we have to. We have to continue downwards. Also, we can't just go up all the time. I love everybody's like, we're scrambling. We are trying to put the pieces back together of what remains and like, yeah. Shan, oh, you're so pure and hopeful and optimistic. Well, I'm killing a bunch of other things, so not so much, but all right. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Okay. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Oh, uh, I'm just drinking champagne. Just watching it all kind of go by. Are you in your uh, yacht? Yeah, because I can be by the water. I have plenty of mushrooms, like I have a little area where they can regenerate themselves. You know, like every great <laughs> action movie at the end or whatever, they have their own like place where like, you know, I'm growing things like on Mars and stuff, you know, like I've got uh -huh. my, I've got my little like set up. I'm sure it'll be just fine. I have enough people, uh, enough staff to help maintain it. Um, Is your staff just fizzy? Is it just fizzy? Uh, yeah. And, uh, and and like one, and yeah. <laughs> there's one other fizzy person too, but <laughs> but it's not fizzy. Mm -hmm. Just no. Tom. <laughs> it's fizzy Tom. There's Tom. Yeah, there's Tom, <laughs> and then there's fizzy Tom. Just to differentiate the two, even though everyone's a little fizzy now. <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness. Uh, I believe in art, though. I I believe that that would be for the people. This is my greatest uh, masterpiece. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, architecture of destruction. So sorry, that's going to art or to dis or to architecture. Um, I'm gonna put that in art. Okay. Art of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I have one more to move around. That's me. Yeah. Um. I think in order to preserve the city. We can't preserve the city because the city is people. Uh, and in order to do so, and our history and everything that happened here, we have to survive. Uh, so I'm gonna put mine behind um, Speedy's idea in architect or agriculture, that we, we must survive this, whether or not the bottom is saved, the lower levels, we have to survive here and now. Our basic needs have to be met if we are to outlive this body of water. Yeah. 
Oh, goodness. Okay, well, that is one roll, two rolls in architecture, and then I think I have a, a dice in energy. Is that right? Yeah, that's the one I, I, I put in myself to uh, desalinate the water. <laughs> and then I have two in architect, three in architecture. So. Alrighty. So I roll three. I roll three. one. Are we still doing D8s or is this D4? Yeah. Still Might as well be okay. D8s. I mean, we're not, we have, somebody has to get a one. True. We're not going to get a one now. I got a four, five, and a seven. Oh my goodness. Okay. Put a tick into four. I got a seven as well. So no, my, my idea does not work or does not happen. Just messed it all up. We do not desalinate that water, which is just as well. I'm sure we didn't have like the time or energy to like have yeah. the technology. Like that would have taken a lot of our resources. Yeah. Plus yeah. we are literally in crisis mode. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was the seven, the four, five, seven. And then can I get two from, I forgot your human name. I'm going to call you Kipper. <laughs> two D a eight, a seven and a Ooh, six. Oh no. Seven and a six. Well, it's the end of the game anyways, because this is how streams work. <laughs> so I'm just going to put one more X into one. And this is going to end us with some final questions as we consider the fall of our civilization. Uh, I'm gonna show to players. When the towers fall, excuse me, when the tower falls, our spike of- Awakening. Awakening, thank you. At some point during the game, our pillar is going to fall, and this triggers the final collapse of civilization, and it also ends the game. Players will answer three questions as a group before walking away from this society altogether. What caused the tower to collapse? And if we could all provide like one short answer. So Kipper, like... or yeah, if you have one, go for it, Track. No, 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 I don't want to take it away from someone, so. Oh, uh, I was just going to force everybody to like answer as I go so we didn't have any uh, space in between. So Track, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say that the the water going a, around the spike has just er eroded. I mean, it just came in from the sky. It it wasn't something that we like built with a foundation there. So as the the soil around it started to like erode away, at one point it just its leaning was too much, and it collapsed. And I imagined it. I imagine it like hitting some of our trees and taking down structures as oh, it yeah. like. Mm -hmm. rolls down them oh yeah uh from speedy's perspective i believe the collapse of the tower was caused by honestly the poor communication that we had had as a civilization and i believe that that ultimately led to the water that uh collapsed the tower uh kipper why do you think the tower collapsed i think the tower collapsed uh due to a lack of true education <laughs> if we would have been uh, a little more educated in our society and what we could do to preserve it in the long term instead of just the here and now, we might have uh, survived this catastrophe. Sean, why do you view this collapse? How do you view this collapse? Um, I think Shan was trying to uh, connect the tower to uh, his project of desalinating the, the water. Uh, and in that, maybe he went a little too far and pushed a few things a little too much. And he thinks that's what caused the fall of the tower, is his ambition to save his society. How about Fizzy? Fizzy believes that the tower collapsed because um, the ocean came in, but the ocean didn't just come in. It, our deities rained heavily down upon us. And they oh, rained yes. so heavily that they diluted the water and it rose too fast. Ooh. Rusting the bottom of the tower. Mm -hmm. I like that. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Did I get away? <laughs> no. Well, okay, so what probably happens is a big old wave, like a monsoon <laughs> situation, as that spike hits the water, a huge wave comes over and overtakes my yacht. I oh, oh, drown. Well, 
Ramp. So, Zelda, this, the last question is what happens <laughs> oh, no. to your character in the aftermath? I was going to give you a happy ending because we all definitely die. <laughs> I'm definitely dead. I'm definitely dead and it's definitely because I'm out in this yacht and I thought it could protect me and oh, I man. save me. Your but, hubris. Uh, I mean, you figure out what you got to do, Fizzy Tom. I don't know how you get out of here, but I definitely do not make it out of there because I'm definitely Does anybody live? Does anybody get a like a happy ending? Speedy definitely dies. They just like fall into the salt water and like dissolve in like a, a bubble. Uh, how Fizzy Tom's on the tip of like the Titanic, like just sort of standing up there and just. Nope. Oh, as it goes down. I have an idea down? for like an ending that's survive but not in a good way kind of thing. absolutely does so, anybody else want to survive before we end yeah. with that uh i have a tragic death don't worry okay uh i i'd like to survive and but be f feeling really 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 guilty about it and probably because he's stuck with high society at this point or what's left of it uh he feels really bad but let's see what track comes up with yeah i feel like that might intersect yeah <laughs> so track track was working with the architects to build faster and build at a higher angle and like just get everything away but when when the the spike of awakening fell all of the lower spirals broke and fell off and started to collapse and as 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 he watches it happening from up at the top where they're building the like next level of the spirals you hear the the shell shock like messages flying out to everyone. And then as the spike hits the ground, it goes completely silent because without the spike of awakening, we can't send the shell shocks to our society before. So Track and all the others are left on their now completely separated like tree spirals and they can't communicate and they can't go back down so that they can like reconnect. So now it's like we have pillars of completely divided societies on all the different trees that are only the people who were already like who had made it far enough up to get out of the water yeah i need it with kipper <laughs> it, that is exactly what she was thinking uh once the spike fell and the split happens between like sections of who made it where uh the shellless try to come to the rescue once again to create bridges of shells from tree to tree uh, but they're no architects and <laughs> tragedy befalls anyone who attempts the bridge as it can't hold the weight. Aww. Falling directly into salt water. Or snails. And I think that is the end of our society. There Terry is uh, dead. Bye, Terry. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you, everybody, for going through this once beautiful tale of wonderful, slightly fizzy snails, only to end with the absolute collapse of our society and probably only the worst of the worst surviving. Like I believe in this, like the shell list, and I believe in their cause, and I hope that they can you know, with the remaining pillars that stand, they can form a much better, cooler society than anything Track could be involved in. Yeah. Track will help rebuild. <laughs> he knows he knows the architecture and he's seen the mistakes that they've made. Perhaps, perhaps he will uh, change his thoughts hmm. for this. He perhaps. just wanted to go up. <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for joining. Um, let us do uh, a lovely round table so we could talk about who you are, what you do, where can we find you and how can we support you? And I was gonna say, how can we support Terry and a new character <laughs> so this doesn't continually happen? And also please uh, support the cause and thank you so much to those who have been donating. Um, so I will go ahead. My name is B. I have been your facilitator. I didn't really GM a single thing. I mean, I barely read the book. I just played it a few times. It was like, I know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. That's how you run games. Um, you can find me on Twitter as B underscore Zelda. I'm a member of the Broadswords, an all-woman non-binary actual play podcast. I stream on Twitch all the time on various channels, even like this channel, I guess. Uh, I am a professional GM with Magpie Games. If you ever want to sit at the table and play some Root or Bluebeard's Bride, you are more than welcome to. Uh, human names, Jordan. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Jordan Pridgen. Um, I am a I am on Wild Cards, our Friday Night Savage Worlds show. We have just announced 
our next um, campaign. So, you know, check out our socials and stuff for that. It'll be really fun. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. And uh, that's that's about that. And also donate to NDLZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chantal. Hey, I'm Chantal B. You can find me on Twitter at Chantal B. You can find me at wordswithcolor.com where I write all sorts of things, um, sometimes narrative, sometimes TTRPG stuff. Um, sometimes who knows what will come out. Sometimes it's, you know, play scripts. I don't know. Um, you can also find me often uh, streaming game over on Do Respite. Um, like two th two hours before this game, I was I just finished an open legend game. So I mm. have sort of jumped from one to the other and now I'm gonna go to bed because it's like 5.49 a.m. Oh on Sunday in Sydney. So, <laughs> yeah, that time. That time. Uh, Jamie. Hi, I am Jamie Mills. You can find me on socials at just Jamie Mills. I'm a part of the DAT network. Right now we're running a lot of Pathfinder and Starfinder with some other things uh, in the works. And I GM crits and giggles on the channel. And I play in things in space, which is Starfinder and heroic endeavors, which is Pathfinder second edition. Ooh. At the DAT network. Yeah, yeah. Well, last but not least, we have Grav. Hi everybody, I'm Grav Galati. You can follow me on all the socials at double GXG. That's the word doubled and GXG. Um, and you can catch me on Saving Throw on Friday nights. We're going to start a new season in a couple weeks here of Wild Cards. That's Savage Worlds for anybody who's interested. And uh, yeah, I'm on other projects as well. So uh, check out Saving Throw's socials at Saving Throw Show for more information. Excellent. I would, I'm going to try and shout out Terry. Um, I'm going to click her Twitter really quick. Uh, Terry is an actor and they are also a co-host to a horror podcast called We Are Into Survival. They are, looks like an RPG cast member of 12-Sided Stories and Saving Throw Show. And they also participate in an ethically diverse Los Angeles-based improv group called Higher Diversity. Please follow Terry on the Terry Gamble on Twitter. And if you have something to kindly give to that poor soul who we have lost to the waters, <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be in the best interest. Uh, yeah, Dom, you want to take it away from here? Nah. Our, our, uh, <laughs> disembodied oh! <laughs> voice has gone Hilarious. AFK. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We're going to, uh, we're going to, uh, play a little video for everybody and say goodbye to our Icarus players. Thank you all very much as we get set up for the next show. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I click leave now. <laughs>